Chapter 13, Junang Battles the Dire Monster Freezing ice covered the area. Frozen corpses stood there like ice statues, whether on the ground, lying down, or standing up. There was no longer any hint of life in them. These 600 corpses, especially those of the 500 innocents, filled Ning's heart with an even stronger desire to kill. Human Youth The aquatic rhino's four legs seemed like massive pillars, pawing at the ground as it stared at Ning. You have angered me. Those were meant to be my food. The ice covered Ning, and there was even a layer of frost on his fur clothes. But Ning's clothes rippled slightly, instantly breaking apart that layer of frost. Still, a large amount of ice continued to accumulate. All Ning could do was constantly break it apart and send it flying. Your swordplay and footwork are both quite impressive, but you are still only at the Haoshin level. Whereas I, I am a mighty Xianshin life form. The aquatic rhino rumbled in deep throated laughter. Since a few dozen ordinary humans fled, you'll have to be the compensatory prize. The flesh of a powerful human youth is even more attractive to me than that of a thousand ordinary humans. I haven't killed the Xianshin life form yet. Covered with frost, Ning stared at the aquatic rhino, his voice ice cold. Thus, I have an unquenchable urge to kill a Xianshin life form. Aquatic Rhino King, as the first Xianshin life form to die to me, you should feel proud. I will chop off your flesh and personally sample it, and I'll also let my parents and clansmen taste your flesh. Hua. Ning's left hand suddenly was also grasping a precious sword, and he was now wielding a Dark North sword in each hand. Twin swords? So it seems your sword play is just average. In this area around Swallow Mountain, there isn't a single person who uses twin swords who had good sword techniques. The aquatic rhino stared at Ning with its enormous eyes, and then casually stamped on the ground, causing the entire area to shake. And then, like a mountain, it came crashing towards him. Die! Bang! A massive hoof, so large that several men would be needed to wrap their arms around it in a circle, came crashing down from up high, stamping down towards Ning. The air itself exploded with a desolate, air-piercing boom, and a blast of energy gouged multiple holes in the ground. Long before this hoof actually touched Ning, Ning knew how powerful it was. Swoosh! Ning first drew out the sword, which dimly flashed like a faint light of water which cut at the enormous hoof in a thin line. After just barely penetrating into the hoof's skin, it was no longer able to penetrate any further. Ning immediately moved like a gust of wind and retreated. Bang! The earth shuddered, and an enormous crater many meters in size appeared, while Ning himself had already dodged more than 30 meters away. You won't be able to escape! The aquatic rhino bellowed as it charged towards Ning. Although it seemed to be clumsy, due to its massive size, it traveled a huge distance with every step. Its enormous hooves created massive crater-like hoof prints in the ground with each pounding step and soon, it chased Ning all the way into a mountain forest not too far from the hill. This forest was only a few square kilometers in size. These trees won't be able to impede me at all, the aquatic rhino bellowed, charging through them. In front of the mountain-like aquatic rhino, these large trees were like blades of grass being stepped on and moved through by ordinary people. He lives up to the reputation of being an aquatic rhino. His physical strength is much greater than that of an ordinary dire monster's. Ning said to himself. And its skin is very thick. Just relying on my internal key energy and one with the world sword play, I'm unable to even break through its skin. It seems I'll have to rely on fiended body refining. Swoosh! Ning, with a leap, suddenly was standing atop the crown of a tall, large tree. Standing on the tree's leaves. He didn't sink down at all, staring down into the matching gaze of the aquatic rhino. Huh? The aquatic rhino suddenly came to a halt. He sensed that there was a change to this human youngster's aura, and in terms of the strength of that aura, it was only very slightly weaker than the aquatic rhino's own. Fiended body refining? Right. Ning's skin was beginning to turn red. The power of the sun and the moon had begun to totally fill his body and his strength instantly rose to the maximum limits. If he could break through and reach the Xianchen life form level, 
the divine power in his body would even be able to appear outside his body. Ha ha, you are but a house in life form. Even if you train in unfeigned body refining, you are far inferior to me. The aquatic rhino charged forward ferociously, smashing through trees in its wake, and the trees it smashed through all went ping bang ping as they collapsed, not able to slow it down at all. HRMPH Standing on the crown of the tree, Ning stared down coldly at the charging aquatic rhino, two swords in his hands. The aquatic rhino was physically enormous. Only a freakishly powerful dire monster such as Serpent Wing would be able to fight against it head on. But, as an expert swordsman, Ning would not do such a thing. Shua. At that moment of impact, Ning used his one with the world level shade one steps to their utmost limits, and in but a single sudden movement, he dodged the aquatic rhino's charge. Compared to Ning, the aquatic rhino was simply far less agile. While dodging from the aquatic rhino, the Dark North sword in Ning's hand sliced down towards the aquatic rhino's flank. The sword flashed like a thin line, translucent, gem like line of light, dot as though it were a line created by a large number of water drops. The line came slashing through the aquatic rhino's flank. Raindrop Sutra, Dash Rain Line. Advanced Level Sword Play. Like the earlier attack he had used to block the aquatic rhino's stomp. This attack also was one which activated on the power of nature. However, last time, Ning had only used his internal key energy as the foundation for the attack, while this time dot the solar and lunar energy in Ning's body exploded. Using the fiend body refining strength as his foundation meant that the power of this attack instantly increased by more than a hundred times. Huala. The tough hide of the aquatic rhino, under the sharp slash of the precious weapon. Dark North Sword, had an enormous wound chopped straight through it. Fresh blood burst forth as though from a dam. Bang! An enormous amount of blood exploded everywhere, and shattered intestines could faintly be seen as well. Swoosh! Ning landed on the ground and turned. The aquatic rhino, which had been charging at high speed, had come to a sudden halt while simultaneously letting out a roar of both pain and rage. His muscles and flesh were quivering and the enormous, ripped wound in his body was rapidly beginning to shrink, but Ning's sword attack had been simply too vicious and the wound created had been too large. Even despite trying hard to suppress the blood from flowing out and to close the wound, blood still dripped out. It no longer seemed as boastful as it had been earlier. Aquatic Rhino King, the day of your death has come. Ning transformed into a shadow, flying at high speed towards the aquatic rhino. Howl. The aquatic rhino let out a fierce howl, and then began to charge madly dot to the opposite direction. It was fleeing. Fleeing. It is going to run away, just like that? Ning was astonished. But he quickly understood. His father had previously told him that dire monsters were extremely crafty. Once they sensed any danger to their well-being, they would immediately flee. Clearly, this aquatic rhino had already discovered that its hide which it was so proud of dot could be broken through by a slice from this youngster. This meant that one of its greatest defenses was now useless. Ning's footwork and agility far surpassed the aquatic rhino. After all, even the dire monster, Serpent Wing, hadn't been able to do anything to him for a period of time. The aquatic rhino had always relied on its thick hide. It had thought that the youngster in front of it couldn't hurt it, while all it had to do was keep charging. If it were to even graze the youngster, the youngster would instantly be injured heavily or even die. But now, it discovered that in but a single sword blow, the youngster had split his chest open. How could this be allowed to continue? Flee. The aquatic rhino fled wildly. My thick hide is hard to split open even for those other dire monsters. How could that human youth's sword be so powerful? The aquatic rhino was utterly frightened, not knowing what to do. But. How could he flee? Ning, when utilizing his one with the world footwork, was only slightly slower than Serpent Wing. He was far superior to the aquatic rhino. Shua. 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 Ning had already caught up to the aquatic rhino. I serve the Azure Skies Nick King. You can't kill me. The aquatic rhino galloped wildly while bellowing loudly, and then it also let out a desolate scream, King. Save me. 
King, save me. The low, fierce scream traveled a very long distance. Swoosh. Ning's incomparably agile body suddenly charged forward, while the twin swords in his hands suddenly, simultaneously stabbed upwards. For a moment, Ning's entire body transformed into a dazzling to behold line of firelight, and with utter ruthlessness, he stabbed upwards at the aquatic rhino's neck position. With a kai sound, the aquatic rhino's skull was broken through. A burst of fire rose over 30 meters into the air before solidifying into a human form. It was the fur clad Ning. Ugh! The aquatic rhino's eyes were bulging and round. It hadn't thought that its glorious, brash life would have suddenly come to an end at the hands of this human youth. As a Xianchen life form dire monster, although it possessed strong life force and wouldn't die even if stabbed in the heart, Ning had selected its true weak point. Forget about the aquatic rhino, even if a Xianchen level fiended body refiner had been stabbed in the head, he would also die. Bang. The massive corpse of the aquatic rhino collapsed to the ground, crushing many trees beneath it. The moth flies into the flame dash it really does live up to its reputation as the most powerful attack of the, thunder flame sword. Ning landed gracefully from midair, not a single hint of blood staining his body. By now, even the three major killing blows of the, thunder flame sword, have been trained to the point of the advanced level. The, raindrop sutra had nine techniques in total, and Ning was already at the advanced level for all of them, able to summon the power of nature. The, Thunder Flame Sword, was a bit harder, especially that last blow, Moth flies into the flame. Ning had never been able to truly grasp it to the point of reaching the advanced level, but just then, that dire monster, the aquatic rhino, had tried to charge into the nearby marsh waters. If it had made it into the marsh waters, Ning wouldn't have been able to do anything to it. In order to instantly kill such a powerful dire monster with such strong life force. Ordinary techniques wouldn't have been enough. Ning had been frantic, and naturally thought of the the moth flies into the flame attack. Utilizing nature's energy, he had pierced straight through the extremely thick skull of the aquatic rhino, like a moth throwing itself into a fire. Dire monster. Ning looked at the mountain like corpse of the aquatic rhino. He couldn't help but reveal a hint of excitement in his eyes. This is the very first Xianchen level dire monster I have ever killed. But before dying, didn't he say something about being the subordinate of some Azure Skies Nick King? HRM, best that I leave quickly and not allow anything out of the ordinary to occur. Shua. Ning instantly appeared next to the aquatic rhino's corpse. His sword flashing. He quickly chopped open the thick skin of the aquatic rhino. The skin of the dead aquatic rhino was now clearly much weaker than before. In but a few seconds, Ning retrieved from the aquatic rhino's corpse a black, palm sized object that faintly emanated a fragrant scent. This was the most precious item contained within the aquatic rhino's body, the bezoar. It was often described as a miraculous antidote to poisons. The value of this aquatic rhino's bezo alone would be enough to acquire an ordinary magic treasure. Time to leave. Holding the monstrous rhino's bezo, Ning instantly moved like a gust of wind, flying away at high speed while occasionally landing and taking a few steps on the surface of the water. Half flying, half walking on the waves, he fled for more than three kilometers. Wawawa. Suddenly, the water in front of him suddenly began to vibrate and an enormous whirlpool appeared. Chapter 14, The God Beast, Azure Sky Snake What? Jining, staring in front of him, couldn't help but come to a halt. Could it be that this Azure Sky Snake King is really about to appear? Not taking the time to consider anything else, Ning immediately turned and dashed across the surface of water towards a different direction, desiring to flee. Hua, An incomparably beautiful, Enormous serpent head emerged from the surface of the lake, covered with jade green scales. Staring at the enormous serpent head of the Azure Skies Nick King which had emerged, Ning's face grew solemn. I'm in trouble now. I didn't expect the Azure Skies Nick King to be this fast. With my one with the world footwork, I can escape the attacks of many dire monsters. In East Mount Marsh, there's only a few dire monsters that pose a threat to me, but the Azure Skies Nick King is one of them. On my very first trip to East Mount Marsh, 
I encountered it. Ning's brain quickly flashed through the information regarding the Azure Skies Nick King which he had read, back in the West Prefecture. The Azure Skies Nick King was a god beast known as the Azure Skies Nick. According to the records of the G Clan, the last time they investigated it, it possessed the power of an early Zyanjin life form. But although it was only an early Zyanjin life form, due to it possessing the lineage of the fiend gods, its power was actually comparable to that of the dire monster, Serpent Wing. The Azure Skies Nick King was famous for its agility. In other aspects, it was perhaps a bit inferior to Serpent Wing, but in terms of agility, it was superior to Serpent Wing. In addition, the Azure Skies Nick's Venom possessed extremely potent, hallucinatory qualities. If it landed a bite on its target, generally speaking, even dire monsters would be affected by hallucinations. My strongest attribute, my agility, is countered by it. Ning was worried. In this sort of life and death battle, agility was even more important than strength and speed. For example, the strength of the aquatic rhino king was far superior to that of Ning. Its defense was far superior to Ning. But in Ning's eyes, the aquatic rhino king was nothing more than a stupid, clumsy idiot. He was able to effortlessly circle around the aquatic rhino king and then kill it. It wanted to ram into Ning, but it couldn't. But what this Azure Skies Nick King was most skilled at was agility. Dash dash dash. Wah wah wah. From afar, the surface of the lake was beginning to slowly reveal an enormous serpentine scaled body. The Azure Skies Nick King raised its serpentine head high, staring towards Ning, its eyes filled with confusion. It let out a few low growling sounds. Huh? Ning frowned, looking back at the Azure Skies Nick King. What was this Snake King saying? He couldn't understand. The Azure Skies Nick King was a god beast dot and at the early Zionshin level, wasn't able to transform, nor was it able to speak in the human tongue. Hua. A human form suddenly rose from the water to stand next to the Azure Skies Nick King. A thin, white robed man appeared, staring towards Ning. He shouted, My king asks you, were you the one who killed the aquatic rhino? If I say I didn't, would you believe me? Ning asked. In this area, aside from you, there are no other humans at all. Who could have done it besides you? The tall and thin white-robed man laughed coldly. In addition, you are able to run atop the water, showing that you have reached the one with the world level. Suddenly, the Azure Skies Nick King let out a few more growls, and the white-robed man changed the subject. However, in the area around the aquatic rhino's body, there are no Zyanshin energy ripple remnants. Could it be that you are not yet a Zyanshin life form? If I answer you, will you let me go? Ning asked. How could that be possible? The white robed man laughed coldly. You killed one of the king's subordinates, the aquatic rhino. If we so casually let you leave, what would become of the king's prestige? Ning frowned and shouted back, If that's the case. Then enough chit chat. If you want to fight, then fight. If you don't want to fight, then I'm leaving. The Azure Skies Nick King stared at Ning with its enormous serpentine head, filled with questions. The little human child in front of it thought it wasn't afraid of him, naturally. But the area around the aquatic rhino was simply too bizarre. There clearly wasn't any Zyanshan energy ripples in the area, but why did the aquatic rhino die? Could someone who wasn't at the Zyanshin level kill a dire monster? HRMPH. Ning immediately began to run atop the water, transforming into a gust of wind, fleeing at high speed. Although he had come out to adventure, he knew his own limits. If he went to engage in battle against dire monsters that were too powerful, he was asking for death. Ning had never intended to do battle against the Azure Skies Nick King. Hua. The Azure Skies Nick King swam across the surface of the lake, transforming into a silver tidal wave. In an instant, an enormous serpentine head appeared in front of Ning yet again. He really is faster than me. Ning came to a sudden halt, his eyes blazing with wildness. It seems this fight cannot be avoided. If that's the case, then let's fight. In East Mount Marsh, the only one faster than my king is that ancient monster, the Snow Toad. Do you know of the ancient snow toad? 
that is the most powerful dire monster of the entire East Mount Marsh. It can freeze and kill you with but a single cold breath. The white-robed man was walking atop the water, each step causing the water to ripple slightly, his movements not nearly as agile and graceful as Ning's. It is best that you simply accept your death before my king. Ning frowned, then transformed into a streak of light, charging towards that tall, thin, white-robed man. Monster, you sure are noisy. Eat a sword from me. Swish. A cold light flashed towards the man. The white-robed man was so frightened that he immediately dove into the water with a splash. He served under the azure sky's Nick king, and in terms of power, he was actually a bit weaker than even the aquatic rhino king. How could he dare to fight with this human youth? Gruul. The azure sky's Nick king suddenly let out an angry roar. Ning turned his head to look at him, not afraid at all. Since he wasn't going to be able to flee, Ning naturally wiped the hesitation and fear away from his heart, leaving only a blazing heat. The heat of battle. Only by fighting an opponent whose strength totally surpassed his own would the blood in his entire body truly begin to boil. Hua dot suddenly, an enormous green scale tail emerged from the lake at high speed, sweeping towards Ning at incomparably high speed. So fast. Ning's entire body was turning faintly red. Clearly, the solar and lunar energies in his body had been raised to their limits. At the same time, his feet began to move in accordance with the shade wind steps, and he wielded his twin dark north swords in his hands, one of which was flashing with blue light on its edge, poison. The dark north swords composed of three swords and a sheath. Two of the swords were normal, but one of them had been coated by Ning with poison. In fact, even a small part of the arrows he had brought were treated with poison. After all, while adventuring and engaging in life and death battles, the ultimate goal was to kill the opponent. Naturally, any means of accomplishing this would be acceptable. When battling with the likes of the aquatic rhino king, Ning didn't bother with poison, but this azure sky's Nick king was simply too dangerous. With one hand, he executed thin streams flow forever. With the other hand, he executed rain line. Both dark north swords moved, instantly drawing forth the power of the natural world. Wawa dot a visible, thin, and long stream of water was currently arcing towards the serpentine tail in an attack. This stream of water was incomparably tough, and it wildly wrapped around the tail, causing the power and speed of that tail to slow. At the same time, drops of water had solidified into a thin line and that thin line chopped directly towards that enormous serpentine body. Bang! Ning was blasted backwards at high speed by the force of the collision, and water splashed everywhere. Huala! Green, emerald-like blood came flying out of a large wound on the serpentine body, but quickly, the flow of blood slowed and the wound shrank. The blood, however, had a faint black color as well, but moments later, it returned to an emerald color. Clearly. The poison on the Dark North Swords didn't pose much of a threat to the Azure Sky's Nick King, which was venomous by nature. Swoosh! Ning rose high into the sky, leaping off the surface of the water. The Azure Sky's Nick King coiled up its enormous body, staring at the distant human youth. This human youth had actually wounded it in a single exchange. Suddenly, the enormous body of the Azure Sky's Nick King began to shrink at high speed. Previously, it had been even larger than Serpent Wing, but in a few seconds, it transformed to a size of only 10 meters long, and its serpentine body was now only as thick as a person's thighs. At the same time, this jade green azure sky's Nick continued to stare at Ning, emitted a hiss sound. Not good. Ning's face grew even more solemn. The azure sky's Nick King was a god beast. It could increase or decrease its size, and was famous for its agility. When it shrank its size, that was when it was the most fearsome. A violet pill suddenly appeared in Ning's hand out of nowhere, and he immediately tossed it in his mouth. This was an endivenum spiritual pill. It was one of multiple different types of endivenums which Ning had prepared for this adventuring expedition for when he encountered dire monsters. This one was particularly effective against hallucinatory toxins and venoms. Ning wielded his twin blades, staring death at the azure sky's Nick King. 
the azure sky's Nick King's serpentine head swayed slightly in a confident manner. It seemed like an experienced hunter, searching for Ning's weaknesses. While swaying, it also slowly began to move closer to Ning, but Ning, striding on water, took one step back after another, maintaining the distance between them. Swish! Suddenly, the azure sky's Nick King transformed into a flash of emerald lightning. It charged at Ning. Ji Ning's eyes flashed with a fierce light. The Dark North Sword in his right hand suddenly transformed into a flash, chopping ray of light as his speed increased to its maximum. This was one of the three killing strokes of the Thunder Flame Sword, Thunder Flint Flash. This technique relied on a single word, quick. It could be described as the fastest sword attack Ning was capable of, and he used it now to deal with this sudden pounce of the Azure Sky's Nick King. Shua. Shua. In but an instant, the Azure Sky's Nick King changed direction twelve times, transforming into a magical, illusory shadow which passed through the Dark North Sword in Ning's right hand, and even used its serpentine body, now greatly reduced in size but clearly much more powerful, to strike at the Dark North Sword. But Ning's left hand, also wielding a Dark North Sword, transformed into circles of spinning water as he put on display the most defensively powerful stance of the Raindrop Sutra, watertight. Clang. The serpentine head and the edge of the Dark North Sword collided, and the Azure Sky's Nick King couldn't help but have its trajectory slightly altered to one side. The two of them passed each other. Pa. In that instant when they moved past each other, a terrifying shadow suddenly emerged from the water, striking towards Ning. Ning, unable to block in time, was struck heavily on the chest with a bang. Sound. Ning couldn't help but immediately vomit out a mouthful of blood, his face turning red as he was sent flying across the surface of the lake. Wawa. The Azure Sky's Nick King swam at high speed through the waters of the lake, pouncing towards Ning's position. Those whip strikes of that tail are too fast much faster than the tail strikes of that old monster serpent wing. Ning, in midair, flipped around and gracefully landed on the surface of the lake. He couldn't help but clutch his chest. He could faintly sense that his bones were broken, but the powerful regenerative energies of the fiended body refining method was quickly restoring them. Kakaka. The two shattered ribs in his chest quickly were repaired. But his strength is quite a bit lower than serpent wings. Ning stared at his chest. Only his fur clothes had been ripped apart. With the added protection of the gold star shirt, his body hadn't been injured too badly. Swish. The Azure Sky's Nick King once more shot towards him as fast as lightning. So very fast. Come. Ning wildly wielded his twin swords in an effort to defend. The Azure Sky's Nick King moved its head as if to bite, moved its body as if to coil around him and also used its serpentine tail to strike at him. Its entire body was a weapon, and it coiled around Ning, wildly attacking. In this sort of extremely close quarters combat, often, a single second would allow numerous blows to be exchanged. Ning's, Raindrop Sutra, and, Thunderflame Sword, had both reached the advanced stage, but he had yet to reach the one with the world level of swordplay. If his swordplay was at the one with the world level, Every ordinary pierce, thrust, scrape. Any attack would be able to call on the national power of the world. Only then was one's level of sword play truly at the one with the world level. Because Ning had yet to reach this level, thus, in this sort of high speed combat, some of the postures and movements of his attacks were no longer carrying the power of the world. Upon losing the national power of the world, the power of his sword play decreased noticeably. This was an enormous flaw one which Ning was relying on his twin swords to make up for, but still, in the end dot if one only defended, one would be defeated. Chi. The Azure Sky's Nick King's serpentine head bit viciously at Ning's calf, and its sharp, venomous fangs pierced straight through the fur clothes and the gold star shirt, the venom in its fangs instantly transmitting into Ning's body. A powerful, numbing, intoxicating sensation quickly spread from Ning's calf to the rest of his body and Ning hurriedly swallowed the end of Nam's spiritual pill which he had been holding under his tongue. Die! Ning struck out with the Dark North Swords in both hands, both of them simultaneously executing the mothflies into the flame of the, 
Thunder Flame Sword. The two swords instantly seemed to have transformed into two scorching lines of fire, piercing down directly towards the head of the Azure Sky Sneak King which was latched onto his calf. Chapter 15, One with the World The white-robed skinny man stealthily popped out of the water, staring at the distant battle between the Azure Sky Sneak and the human youth. That human youth is truly formidable. The white-robed man couldn't help but let out a soft sigh of amazement. He's actually able to force the king to shrink in size to fight him. In terms of power, even I am inferior to that human youth. It seems in the future, when I encounter human youths, I need to be more careful. Still, it looks like that human youth is about to die. After he dies, I need to go have a taste of that youth's flesh. Such a powerful human youth. I haven't seen another like him in the 300 years I have spent training. Huh. How unfortunate for him. The white robed man shook his head as he watched. Most of Jean Ning's beast fur clothes had been ripped to tatters, and blood was dribbling down his chest. His hair bindings had been shattered, and his hair was now loose and unbound. But he still wielded those two dark north swords with hands that were as stable as ever and his eyes were still very bright, as though fires were burning in them. Desire A desire to achieve victory. Even though he was currently at a disadvantage and was being wounded repeatedly, Ning had never even thought of giving up. Dash 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 dash. So what if you trained in a fiend body refining method? The white-robed man snickered. He's still only at the Haoshin level. Injured repeatedly, then healing repeatedly. Each recovery will take up a large amount of his energy. After the energy in his body is depleted. Then, utterly exhausted, he will no longer be able to fight back. He could all but see the astonishingly talented youth collapse, and then be dismembered and eaten by the dire monsters. How sad. A heroic figure who would have doubtlessly become legendary throughout this area is going to die, right here. The white robed man watched, not wanting to miss a thing. Huh? The white-robed man's face changed slightly. Why is his sword play? Dash 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 dash. The Azure Sky's Nick King was simply too strong. After having shrunk in size, the body of the Azure Sky's Nick King became even tougher, like an iron whip. It had also become even more agile and even fiercer. In terms of strength, defense, speed. It was superior to Ning. Ning's only advantage was that the pair of Dark North swords he wielded in his hands. The Azure Sky's Nick King's pressuring attacks had caused Ning to enter an empty mental realm where nothing existed except the next attack. He didn't have any other thoughts, other than thoughts of battle. Gil. Gil. The Azure Sky's Nick King in front of him was like a nightmare. Its striking attacks was even faster than Ning's Thunderflint Flash. Its coiling body was even more elastic than Ning's than Stream's Flow Forever attack. Its whip-like tail struck against Ning, causing him to lose his breath, but fortunately, his two Dark North swords were able to complement each other. If one sword couldn't take it, then the second sword would join in. Clang! 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 At first, he was constantly being wounded. However, because he had a fiendgood body and had eaten an antivenom spiritual pill, the venom of the Azure Sky's Nick King, despite causing a bit of numbness, didn't have any effect on his ability to perform in battle. As for blood loss, Ning cared about that even less. Slowly, the Azure Sky's Nick King seemed to find it harder and harder to break through the defenses of the Dark North Swords. It was growing harder for him to wound Ning. Wawawa! The swords flashed everywhere summoning the power of the world. The Azure Sky's Nick King transformed into an emerald ray of light, swirling around Ning, attacking him wildly time and time again, but that perfect, mastered swordplay which carried with it the power of the world had created an utterly unbroken defense. One sword attack flashed after another, flowing like quicksilver, revealing no cracks at all, causing each of the Azure Sky's Nick King's attacks to be fruitless. HRM? Ning suddenly found that he was able to think again. Earlier, the Azure Sky's Nick King had simply put him under too much pressure, forcing him to totally concentrate on defense and on this battle. But now, that pressure had decreased, and he could spare a little bit of time to think. 
and when he did, Ning discovered that under the pressure of the Azure Sky's Nick King's attacks, his sword play had become perfected, with each sword blow that he delivered having not a single flaw at all. My sword play. Ning's face slowly was covered with a smile. Ha 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 ha. Ning suddenly laughed loudly, laughed joyfully. I broke through, ha ha ha. Azure Sky's Nick King, thank you for helping me make this breakthrough. I finally reached the level of becoming one with the world and swordplay. One with the world. After having experienced these two major, bloody battles, especially with the amount of pressure which the Azure Sky's Nick King had placed him under, Ning had finally taken the final step and reached the level of being one with the world and swordplay. Actually, Ning had already reached the end of the advanced level in both sets of sword techniques he knew, and had already been very close to breaking through. All he needed was a bit of good luck. If he had stayed in the West Prefecture City and slowly trained on his own through constant repetition, he probably would have needed a few more years to break through. Dash 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 dash. Hiss. Hello, growling hiss. The Azure Skies Nick King had been enraged. The arrogant beast hadn't expected that the youth he was hunting would suddenly have improved. What's the point of being angry? Ning ran atop the surface of the water. I no longer fear you now. Hiss. Hissing with fury, the Azure Skies Nick King pounced wildly towards Ning, moving with even greater ferocity, no longer paying attention to its own defense. Previously, as the Azure Skies Nick King had the advantage, it didn't pay too much attention to receiving wounds, but now, the Azure Skies Nick King had decided that even at the cost of being wounded, it would still kill this arrogant, belittling human. Come, you little widdle snaky. Ning wielded dark north swords in his two hands. At this moment, he felt as though being able to display his sword play was a sort of enjoyment, something which was graceful and elegant. He delivered one sword stroke after another, each one perfect and flawless. Even the simplest of chops and stabs were utterly unbreakable and immaculate. Our fight comes to an end here for today, Azure Skies Nick King. This time, thank you so very much for helping me break through. Ning laughed loudly as he began to run away. Both of the Dark North swords in his hands were currently executing the watertight stance of the Raindrop Sutra. He wasn't striving to land any blows, only to be able to defend himself, causing the Azure Skies Nick King to be utterly unable to do anything to Jin Ning. And in the blink of an eye, Ning fled far away. A long time later, GRRRRR. The Azure Skies Nick King swam back. All it could do was raise its head towards the sky and roar in dissatisfaction. Over the course of its life, it had met multiple Xianshan level humans who had reached the one with the world level, but it had still beaten the snot out of those humans. But that youngster with the twin swords he had just faced used those two swords as though they were wielded by two separate people who were perfectly linked in their thoughts. Indeed, the threat posed by those twin swords was ten times greater than normal. No matter what sort of disadvantage Ning had been put into, and even if one of his swords had been forced out of position and no longer at the pseudo one with the world level granted by his sword techniques, the other sword would still maintain the one with the world level, causing his actual battle ability to be no lower than that of a single weapon expert at the one with the world level. But now, Ning had truly reached the one with the world level, and his power had exploded. Even facing against a Xianchen god beast, he was still able to flee easily. Dash 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 dash. Swoosh. He ran as fast as the wind. Ha 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 ha. Ning was extremely delighted. He ran as he pleased atop the surface of the water, moving through East Mountain Marsh before entering the mountain forests. After running a long time, Ning leapt atop a large tree. Passing by the crown of the tree, with another leap, he sent himself floating gracefully several dozen more meters before landing by atop a cliff. With only a few more bounds, he ended up at the peak of this little mountain. Sitting down on the mountain peak, he leisurely withdrew a bottle of fruit wine from his kale stone, then raised his head and poured it into his mouth. And then, Ning happily shouted, Enjoyable. Today was so enjoyable. He had battled against two dire monsters, and had executed the aquatic rhino king. The other, 
more powerful dire monster, the Azure Skies Nick King, was indeed extremely powerful. Under the pressure of its attacks, Ning's sword play had suddenly broken through and reached the one with the world level. One with the world. Ning couldn't help but feel self-satisfied. Although the Xianxin level experts of West Prefecture City can use magic treasures, in terms of skill level, I imagine most of them are inferior to me. Only, I don't know what level father is at, exactly. Even before going out and adventuring, father had become acknowledged as the number one expert of the G clan of the West Prefecture, and had reached the one with the world level long ago. Afterwards, he had gone adventuring for nearly 10 years and met my mother. And then, ever since then, he had been living peacefully at the West Prefecture City. Nobody knows how strong he has become. Ning pondered this question. But previously, when that dire monster, Serpent Wing, had attacked, that sword blow father sent out from far away. That sword blow had truly been terrifying. My father's skill level should still be stronger than mine. Ning shook his head. Enough of that. I'm not even at the Xianxin level yet. Xianxin life forms possessed extraordinary power. Even key refiners at that level would be able to use all sorts of magic treasures, seals, and formations. As for fiended body refiners, they had all sorts of incredible transformations available to them, and they would truly be able to be described as fiend gods. After all, during the ancient fiend era, those fiend gods were all born at the Xianxin level. The technique I am training in is acclaimed as the most powerful fiend body refining technique. Not a single member of the G clan, in its entire history, has ever successfully reached the Xianxin level in it. Ning was worried about this. So how should I break through, exactly? The, crimson bright diagram of the nine heavens, was simply too difficult. Actually, Ning's natural gifts such as his utterly pure body, as clean as a newborn's, and the, new wa painting, visualization technique, caused the power of his already mighty soul to increase every day. It was extremely beneficial to him in body training, causing his rate of improvement to be extremely rapid. If he had been training in an ordinary fiended body refining method, he would have broken through to the Xianxin level long ago. By contrast, in terms of key refining, Ning's talent was a bit weaker. Because he had been injured while he was in the womb, his meridian system had been damaged. At that time, when his father, Ji Yichuan, and Prefecture Lord Ji Young had investigated the quality of the meridians in his body, they had found that it was very average. The vast majority of Xianxin life forms relied on key refining to traverse the path of immortals. Fiendgood body refining was even more difficult. None of them had expected that although Ning's key refining talent was rather poor, he would have such a monstrous aptitude for body refining. The, Crimson Bright Diagram of the Nine Heavens, has notes. I have to merge yin and yang, fuse fire and water. The power of the moon and the power of the sun must combine into a whole, transforming into the Crimson Bright Divine Power. Ning pondered this. But how would one cause fire and water to fuse? How would one cause the power of the moon and the sun to combine into a whole? All Ning knew was that fire and water didn't mix. How, then, could fire and water be fused? This was an extremely difficult step. I have to reach the Xianxin level. Ning suddenly rose to his feet. Standing at the mountain peak, his eyes were filled with desire. The Xianxin level, in the distant heaven realm, is nothing more than a starting point. To the ancient fiend gods, the Xianxin level is nothing more than the level they were at when they were first born. If I can't even break through to the Xianxin level, how can I possibly talk about being able to control my own destiny? Chapter 16, The Fur Collectors The exquisitely cut and stitched beast furs were very form-fitting, causing Autumn Leaf to seem rather heroic and valiant. She stood there in the area outside the Metal Stone tribe staring off into the distance. Her figure had attracted the attention and the gazes of this rustic tribe's youths. Ever since Autumn Leaf had arrived at the Metal Stone tribe, there had been no question that she had become the most beautiful girl here. One youngster after another did their best to find opportunities to show off their strength and valor in front of her, but not a single one had been able to attract her interest. 
Miss Autumn Leaf is waiting for her young master, right? Right. I hear that Uncle Dalla, upon returning, said that her young master is extremely powerful. Over a hundred blue guards of the Ironwood clan were all killed by that young master in the blink of an eye. Only a powerful young master like that would be worthy of someone as beautiful as Miss Autumn Leaf. It's a pity that he encountered a dire monster. Most likely, that powerful young master won't be able to survive his encounter with a dire monster. When angered, dire monsters can cause the entire area to change. That one had immediately killed a large group of people by freezing them to death. Uncle Dalla and the others were only lucky enough to survive because they fled quickly. If that young master were to die, Miss Autumn Leaf would have to find another person to marry. The youths of the tribe all watched from their position by the gate while speaking quietly amongst themselves. As far as they considered, a girl like Autumn Leaf was like one of the legendary goddesses. Compared to Autumn Leaf, the other girls of their tribe were as far beneath her as the earth was beneath the heavens. Dash 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 dash. Autumn Leaf stood there, staring into the distant mountain forest. She was waiting. Waiting for the most important man in her life. Autumn Leaf. A powerfully built figure strode out from the tribe. It was the other servant, Ma U. Ma U urged her, go back and get some rest. Once the young master arrives, the guards at the gate of the tribe will definitely see him. No. Autumn Leaf shook her head gently. Ma looked at Autumn Leaf, and then he sat down as well on a nearby, chopped through tree trunk. His forehead was furrowed in worry as well. After Uncle Dalla had returned, he had found out that Jean Ning had begun battling with the aquatic rhino king, a dire monster. As to what the results of that battle were, no one knew. Although in his heart, of course he still hoped that his young master would return, his rational mind was telling him that the young master probably had met with misfortune. This was because Uncle Dalla and the others had spent roughly two days on the journey back from East Mount Marsh. Given young Master Ning's speed, if he was still alive, he probably would have made his way to the Metalstone tribe under half a day. Logically speaking, he should have reached the Metalstone tribe before Uncle Dalla and the others had arrived. But Uncle Dalla and the others had been back for more than two days, but Ning had yet to return. If the young master is dead. Autumn Leaf and I will most likely have to die as well. Mao said quietly. If their master died, how could the servants continue to live? Local hegemons such as the G clan had very strict internal regulations. Huh? Ma U suddenly blinked. From afar, he faintly saw an indistinct, yet familiar figure. The young master's figure. Young master. Autumn Leaf had already begun to rush over there. Young master? Miss Autumn Leaf is running over. Look, there seems to be someone coming from that side. Could that be the young master which Miss Autumn Leaf has been waiting for? The youths standing guard at the gate whispered to each other, while some of them you also immediately began to run inside the tribe to inform the other tribesmen. Dash 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 dash. Autumn Leaf watched as the fur-clad, smiling young man walked over. The past two days, she had been constantly repressing her own fear, her nervousness, her wild thoughts. And now, all these various emotions caused her to suddenly begin to shed tears. Young Master. Autumn Leaf looked at Ning. I, I. Hey, I'm back. With his astonishing eyesight Ning noticed that from afar, in the middle of the tribe, Uncle Dalla and the one-armed man were currently walking in their direction. He couldn't help but laugh, so Dalla made it back already. Was he the one who told you that I was battling with the aquatic rhino king? Just because I didn't come back for a few days, you were frightened this badly? Autumn Leaf did her best to hold back further tears. It was just an aquatic rhino king. To your young master, it's barely worth mentioning. Ning winked at her, seemingly in extremely high spirits. Autumn Leaf breathed out in astonishment, Young master, you killed the dire monster? Yep. Ning nodded delightedly. Wow, a dire monster. Young master, you killed a dire monster. Autumn Leaf was extremely excited. Young master, you are only 11 years old, but you killed a dire monster. This dot this. As a personal maidservant, Autumn Leaf's life centered around Ning. 
as she always revolved around him, to her, Ning was like her most important family member. Naturally, Autumn Leaf was truly excited to learn that Ji Ning was now capable of killing dire monsters. Ji Ning hurriedly lowered his voice. Don't spread the news. Right, right. Autumn Leaf nodded hurriedly. Come, let's go take a look at the Metal Stone tribe. Ning said. The past few days, Ning had been in the mountain forests, pondering the results of the past two days' battles. He had also come to realize some mistakes he had made in the previous battles. After careful pondering and consideration of the two sword techniques he had used, he had actually improved quite a bit further. Ning led Autumn Leaf towards the gate of the Metal Stone tribe. Uncle Dalla and a group of tribesmen were there, and they went up to welcome him. Leading the tribesmen was a balding old man with white hair. The balding old man walked over and bowed repeatedly with respect. I, Tyson of the Metal Stone tribe, would like to thank you, mighty young master, for having repeatedly saved the lives of the tribesmen of my Metal Stone tribe. All the clansmen of the Metal Stone tribe feel boundless gratitude for you. And we've been waiting for your return. Ning smiled and nodded. I'll stay with your Metal Stone tribe for a period of time. As for rescued, all I did was help out in passing. Also dot for now, I don't want to be disturbed. Understood, understood. The balding old man nodded repeatedly. Dalla. Ning looked over. The tall, powerful, bear-like Uncle Dalla hurriedly stepped forward, seemingly very excited. Young master, when I saw that you returned, I... It's all right. Ning laughed. You helped me for a month in East Mount Marsh. I told you that when I returned to the Metal Stone tribe, I would definitely reward you heavily. Take this. As he spoke, within his hands, three beast heads of gold appeared. He tossed it over, each beast head weighing ten pounds. This bear-like Uncle Dalla instantly was stupefied. And then, he hurriedly caught them all, while the surrounding tribesmen all stared at him with envy. Let's go. Ning looked at Mao and Autumn Leaf, then headed straight into the Metal Stone tribe. Ning could easily have given an even more valuable gift, but to a small tribe like the Metal Stone tribe, which had barely a thousand people, truly valuable treasures might cause a disaster instead. Dash 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 dash. Within the Metal Stone tribe. Young Master. Autumn Leaf poured some fruit wine for Ning, then offered him some fruit and some delicacies. Mo and I have been in this tribe for a month now. Not soon after arriving, we got in touch with our G clan. Right. Ning nodded. While adventuring, every month he had to reach out to and contact the scattered troops of the G clan of the Western Prefecture who were stationed in various places throughout the area. There is a letter from the West Prefecture city. Autumn Leaf withdrew a scroll from her sleeves. Ning accepted it. He rolled the yellow parchment open and as he did, he couldn't help but reveal a smile. This was a letter his mother had personally written to him. The letter didn't contain too much, it mainly just consisted of some words of concern. But having just experienced a life and death battle, the nagging of his mother actually filled Ning's heart with a sense of warmth. Enough, Autumn Leaf. It looks as though it's been many days since you had a good rest. Go get some rest, Ning said. I'm not tired. Autumn Leaf hurriedly said. Go. Ning ordered. Autumn Leaf hurriedly lowered her head, obediently going back to her own room to get some rest. Dash 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 dash. Time moved on. Every ten days or so, he would make a trip to East Mount Marsh. Most of the time, though, Ning remained within the Metal Stone tribe, practicing his sword techniques. In the blink of an eye, over a month had passed. Ning was currently seated on the eaves of his house, holding a bamboo reed that was filled with fine fruit wine. Although West Prefecture City is large, it isn't as comfortable as these small tribes. Resting at sundown, heading out at sunrise. The Metal Stone tribe showed great solidarity. Everyone helped each other, and they all treated each other like brothers. Quick, quick, quick. Everyone, go back. Quick bundle everything up. Suddenly, the formerly peaceful tribe instantly became a chaotic bedlam of activity. This caused Ning, who was drinking wine leisurely on the top of his building, to grow confused. 
He immediately leapt down from the building, then grabbed one of the running youths. You! Young master! The youth, seeing that it was Ning who grabbed him, immediately greeted him respectfully. What's going on? Ning asked. Why did the tribe suddenly turn so chaotic? Weren't you training in spear fighting just now? Why did you stop? The people of the Black Mount tribe are coming. The youth hurriedly said. The people of Black Mountain tribe have come to collect furs from us. We need to hide some of the finer furs which the tribe has, as otherwise, if the Black Mountain tribe discovers them, they'll take them from their own. That would be terrible. Young master, I need to get back immediately. Ning, understanding, nodded. Go ahead. Autumn Leaf was watching this from in front of the building as well. She spoke out. The Black Mount tribe is an extremely large tribe with tens of thousands of tribesmen. Each year, these smaller tribes will have to offer them some tribute. HMPH. Ning frowned. This land belongs to the G clan. Only my G clan has the right to levy taxes. If the Black Mount tribe is forcing the nearby, smaller tribes to pay them tribute, isn't that the same as levying a tax? The G clan levied and collected taxes from every single tribe within its borders. At the same time, the G clan itself was a subject of the Grand Shia dynasty, and so most of the tax they collected had to be delivered to the Grand Shia dynasty. In principle, yes. Autumn Leaf shook her head. But how would these smaller tribes dare to refuse? If they were to refuse, the Black Mount tribe is completely capable of utterly destroying them then selling off the captives as slaves. Ning let out a long sigh. Right. Because there were too many tribes, there was no way for the G clan to manage all of the internecine squabbles between the tribes, so they usually left them to their own devices. Not just the G clan. Even the Grand Shia dynasty, who ruled over an enormous, boundless expanse of territory, had to govern in a loose fashion. Wasn't the G clan and the Ironwood clan also in a state of war, viewing each other as deadly enemies? If one's territory was too large, it became hard to govern. They're coming. Autumn Leaf said. The Black Mount tribe's tribesmen are coming. Ning looked over as well. He saw that from afar, a group of half-armored, pale-clad tribesmen were currently strutting around in the area, looking around as if they were in territory which belonged to them. The leader of the Metalstone tribe, Uncle Dalla, and the others were all by their sides, obediently following them, not daring to disobey them at all. The leader of this Black Mount squad, Brave Shell, was currently viewing this little tribe with satisfaction. HMPH. Brave Shell glanced at the nearby Metalstone tribesmen. Seeing the frightened, supplicatory looks on their faces, he couldn't help but feel even more delighted. Even within the Black Mountain tribe, he was a high-level, central figure. In a small tribe like this Metalstone tribe. He could act as he wished. If he was angered, this entire tribe would probably be finished. The hundred guards he had brought with him could probably destroy this sort of small tribe all by themselves. In this sort of small tribe, he had absolute authority. Huh? Brave Shell suddenly saw that not too far away, there was a young man and a girl standing together. Brave Shell's eyes instantly lit up. The guards by his side, looking along with him, couldn't help but hold their breaths as well. Beautiful. Mesmerizing. Brave Shell was instantly stunned, and then his heart was instantly overwhelmed with powerful lust and desire. He definitely had to seize this beautiful girl and make her his personal maidservant. Every day, he would definitely bestow his affections on her. Just thinking about it made Brave Shell feel the blood pumping through his entire body. Ha ha ha. Laughing loudly, Brave Shell walked directly towards the young man and the girl. Ning frowned slightly as he looked at this tall man walking towards him, who was wearing some exquisitely crafted ornaments. The tall man swept Ning and Autumn Leaf with a gaze, as though he were a high-ranking tribesman inspecting some goods. In particular, he didn't disguise the greedy look in his eyes when he was staring at Autumn Leaf. Your fur clothes were cut and stitched so exquisitely. Did you make it yourself? Miss, your handiwork is quite fine. The fur clothes of the youngster next to you is stitched and cut very nicely as well. Is he your little brother? Chapter 17, Sword Energy Flying Everywhere Impudent. Autumn Leaf's voice rang out. 
Brave Shell raised his jaw slightly. Impudent? This tiny little metal stone tribe. I can do what I wish to it, much less impudent. I'll tell you the truth. I've taken a fancy to you. Follow me obediently. The last time I took a fancy to a girl, that girl was quite stubborn. She preferred to commit suicide than follow me, so I wiped out her entire family, and sold off her entire clan as slaves. For your little brother here, and your clansmen, you need to make a good decision. Tribes folk were straightforward individuals. They weren't very calculating, but at the same time, they were very bloodthirsty. Most of them didn't fear death, especially beautiful girls like the one in front of him right now. They were definitely the shining jewels of their tribes, and generally they were all very prideful. It was quite common for such beautiful girls to rather commit suicide than to submit to others, once their pride took hold of them. Brave Shell didn't want to see this happen. Venerable Lord Brave Shell, the balding elder, Tyson, hurriedly urged him, These three do not belong to my Metalstone tribe. They're come from a very large tribe. A large tribe? Brave Shell's eyebrows twitched. No wonder. I was just wondering how a place like your Metalstone tribe could produce such a graceful young lady. Miss, tell me what tribe you belong to. As he spoke, he moved two steps forward, wanting to stroke Autumn Leaf's face. Autumn Leaf directly delivered a lightning fast kick to him. Bang! This heavy kick was powered by a rage, and it struck heavily upon Brave Shell's chest. Not only did it shatter the ornaments covering his chest, it also sent Brave Shell falling back over his head. Impudent! Clang! The Black Mountain Guards instantly shouted in anger, and some of them even drew their blades. Brave Shell quickly climbed up. He wiped away a hint of blood from the corner of his mouth, then reached out to stop his guards. All his guards knew exactly how vicious and diabolical Brave Shell could be, for him to have become a high-level, core member of a tribe as large as the Black Mountain tribe. It's all over. This young miss is going to suffer a terrible fate. The guards all understood that when Brave Shell was clearly furious but temporarily suppressed his anger, it only represented dot that Brave Shell was truly livid. He was currently considering how to vent his fury. Brave Shell was on his feet now. His eyes were narrowed, staring at the three like a poisonous viper. He slowly said, that kick was rather heavy. Can you let me know where the three of you have come from, exactly? Is it a large tribe, or is it the mighty G clan? Take a good look. Mo stepped forward coldly revealing with a flip of his hand an emblem. The emblem had a single word on it, G. G. Many of the faces of the surrounding guards changed. They all looked at their leader, Brave Shell, whose face had turned ashen. He hurriedly bowed in terror, I didn't expect that I would accidentally offend you. Please pardon me. Ma U's eyes contained a hint of pity in them, because he knew how much his young master hated evildoers. Autumn Leaf also glanced coldly at Brave Shell. Ever since Brave Shell said that he had once destroyed a small tribe for the sake of seizing a girl, and sold off all the tribesmen as slaves, Autumn Leaf had felt at a revulsion for him. Because she herself had been sold off after her tribe had been destroyed. Jining simply looked at Brave Shell. In an instant, he had already determined that he would punish Brave Shell with death. Brave Shell had destroyed an entire tribe for no cause? When Ning thought of how the women and children in that tribe had died miserable deaths or had been sold, Ning's heart was filled with boundless rage. Although this area contained many hidden evildoers, and Ning couldn't possibly stop them all, when he encountered them, he could never suppress the fury he felt. Ha ha ha! Brave Shell, whose face had been ashen, suddenly cracked his lips and laughed, laughed brightly. It seems the three of you already have a killing intention. I really don't know if I should call you stupid or arrogant. Oh? Ning frowned slightly. Brave Shell continued to laugh. So what if you are of the G Clan? How many youngsters of the five prefectures of the G Clan go out adventuring as part of their coming of age, and how many of them have died? How could the G Clan possibly discover dot if their clansmen were killed by monstrous beasts, or by other tribesmen? Even if you have a high status, in this place, you are nothing more than three people. Thus, even if you want to kill me, you should hide it in your hearts. As the books say, 
distant water cannot quench a nearby drought. No matter what your status is, no one will be able to save you. Brave Shell sighed. I still remember how three years ago, I once enjoyed a young girl of the G clan. Her skin was truly fine. My servants all enjoyed her as well, and afterwards, we fed her to the beasts who ate her clean. Do you understand now? Brave Shell's eyes were shining. Status doesn't represent power. At least in this place, I am the one who determines your life and death. Everyone. Brave Shell raised his head and said in a loud voice. Make your move. Kill the two men, spare the woman. After I enjoy her first, each of you will have your chance. Woo. Gil. Ha ha, let's do it. Brave Shell's guards all drew out their blades and swords, valiantly charging forward. The high-level military leaders of large tribes trusted their own servants and slaves the most. Whether it was Ji Li or Ji Yichuan, they all had their own trusted servants and slaves, who would definitely obey them without question. Under Brave Shell's orders, these guards, who were born into his servitude, all dared to charge forward and kill. How dare you! Suddenly, a voice rang out like spring thunder, exploding in the skies. In the skies above, there was someone standing atop an enormous flying bird. That person drew out his longsword and brandished it downwards. In but a second, sword energy crisscrossed everywhere. One ray of sword energy after another rained down, and each blow of sword energy pierced through a guard, easily chopping their bodies apart, sending fresh blood spewing everywhere. Ah! No! Ah! All sorts of miserable cries rang out, but soon, everything became silent again. The hundred-plus servant guards, who had been shouting savagely, all collapsed on the ground. Some had large holes in their chest, while others had been chopped apart. Blood stained the ground. All of them had died miserable deaths. But not a single one of the utterly terrified tribesmen of the Metalstone tribe had been struck. But dot but dot but. Brave Shell had thought that everything was under his control, but now, his face turned ashen. He stood there numbly, staring at his dead servants, and then at the man standing on the giant bird in midair. He stuttered, Xi'an. Xianshan. The people of the Metal Stone tribe all raised their heads. Some were dumbfounded, others were awestruck, while some of the girls in particular just stared unblinkingly. Ning, Autumn Leaf, and Ma U all raised their head to take a look as well. Swoosh. The man jumped down from his midair position on the back of the giant bird, landing on the ground. Young master. The man bowed slightly as he said to Ning, demonstrating his respect for Ning. This scene caused all the members of the Metal Stone tribe, as well as Brave Shell, feel stunned. Because just then, those lines of energy attacks represented that this person was a Xianjin life form. A Xianjin life form, in any tribe, no matter how large, was definitely a person of the highest status. Even in the G clan, they were high level, core members. Generally speaking, the adventuring youths of the G clan who encountered Cyanchen life forms all had to pay their respects first. But this Cyanchen life form was actually paying his respects to this youngster? Spare me! Brave Shell threw himself forward, kneeling in front of Ning, begging, Mighty young master, those words that I said earlier were all wild ravings. I've never done such a thing. In addition, once, when I was collecting furs from some small tribes, I acquired a special treasure. It definitely is a magic treasure. As to what type of magic treasure it is, I don't understand either. As long as you are willing to spare me, young master, I am willing to give this magic treasure. Before he even finished speaking. Who? Brave Shell suddenly threw himself towards Ning, his right hand forming a claw wanting to rip out Ning's throat. At such a close range. Generally speaking, even late-stage Haoshan experts would find it hard to dodge. HRMPH. With a casual wave of his hand, despite striking out later, Ning's hand slapped down onto Brave Shell's skull before Brave Shell finished his attack. Brave Shell's body trembled, and then blood began pouring out of his nose and his ears, and his body weakly tumbled to the ground. He's a sly one. Ning said softly. This brave shell really was both crafty and vicious, venomous and diabolical, daring to do anything. 
even though he knew that his chance of dealing with the Xianchen level person was low, he immediately made the decision to first use the magic treasure to try and attract Ning's interest. And then try to capture Ning. As long as he could take Ning hostage, he would have a chance at life. Unfortunately, Ning was someone who could kill even dire monsters with ease. So him and those guards were all on the same side, the Xianchen level man said with a laugh. Those guards were all half armored, while this person was dressed in furs. I hadn't noticed him. Thank you for your assistance, Elder Apprentice Brother, Ning said with a laugh. The man in front of him was one of the nine major disciples which his father, Ji Yichuan, had trained. His name was Wan Feng, and he was an early Xianjin life form. Within the Ji clan of the West Prefecture, his status was fairly high, but at his current level of power, he wasn't quite eligible yet to take command over the Black Armored Riders, while Ning, being the next prefecture lord, had an extremely high status. If you had been the one to act, young master, things would have gone just as easily. Wan Feng sheathed his longsword while laughing. But I came here for an important reason. Important reason? Ning's face changed. He kept in touch with the West Prefecture once a month. The person who had come this time was his own elder apprentice brother. One could imagine how important the reason was, for a Xianxian expert to personally make the journey. Let's chat inside, Ning said hurriedly. Ning glanced at the still shocked Metal Stone tribesmen. Dispose of the corpses. As for the Black Mount tribe. In a little while, I'll ask my elder apprentice brother to make a trip to the Black Mount tribe. You naturally won't have anything to worry about. Thank you, young master. The balding elder and the others all hurriedly fell to their knees. Only now did they understand how exalted Ning's status truly was. For even a Xianchen life form to greet him with respect. A person like this, even the chieftain of the Black Mount tribe would have to kneel before. Ning and Wan Feng quickly entered the stone room, then closed the door. Quick! Quick, clean it up! The people of the Metal Stone tribe were filled with pumping blood as they looked at the corpses on the ground. They felt both nervous and excited. Normally, they had to all but worship the ground on which these terrifying Black Mount tribesmen walked on, but now, all of them lay here dead. So even you will have an ending like this. That cold, one-armed man gave a savage kick to the corpse of Brave Shell, his eyes filled with rage and hate. Dash dash dash. Within the room. Only Ning and Wan Feng were present. Elder Apprentice Brother, what is the matter? Ning asked. Why did you come here? Because of the dire monster, Serpent Wing. Wan Feng's face was solemn. Chapter 18, Yin and Yang Twin Energy Formation The dire monster, Serpent Wing? Ji Ning frowned. What happened? Our Ji clan of the West Prefecture should have people stationed at Serpent Wing Lake with multiple Xianxian experts present. Could it be that Serpent Wing has escaped Serpent Wing Lake? Wan Feng shook his head. If he had simply escaped from Serpent Wing Lake, that would be a minor affair. Alas, our G clan of the West Prefecture actually ended up helping out Serpent Wing. Our Xianxian experts stationed at Serpent Wing Lake constantly try to kill him whenever possible, causing Serpent Wings every day to be filled with danger. There were several major battles as well. Under that pressure. Serpent Wing actually reached the peak of the Xianchen level. What? Peak Xianchen level? Ning was shocked. A peak Xianchen level dire monster was truly dangerous. Even East Mountain Marsh had only a single peak Xianchen level dire monster, that ancient snow toad. The Xianchen level experts of our G clan of the West Prefecture were only able to just barely survive through relying on their magic treasures. They had to just watch as Serpent Wing disappeared. Wan Fang sighed. As soon as he heard this news, Master immediately went in pursuit. Father went in pursuit? Ning nodded. Wan Fang nodded as well. But that Serpent Wing can both soar in the skies as well as dive into the seas. His speed is now much faster than before. And as soon as he enters the deep water, even a Zaifu disciple would find it hard to kill him. Master understood this as well, and this pursuit of his ended in failure. Thus, he ordered me to tell you of this affair and to make sure that you are careful. After all, previously, 
you killed his child. Understood. Ning nodded solemnly. It seems I need to leave this metal stone tribe now. Serpent Wing, HRMPH, I didn't expect he'd survive this long, much less make a breakthrough. This sort of old monster who has been training for thousands of years has accumulated significant experience. It isn't strange for him to make a breakthrough at last. Wan Fang then said, that's all there is to report. My mission is now complete. Ning hurriedly advised him, O oh, Prentice brother Wan Fang, those people you executed earlier belong to the Black Mountain tribe, located not far from here. Go help me wrap their knuckles a bit. Just leave this sort of minor task to me. Wan Fang nodded. Dot. That very day, Ning led Autumn Leaf and Mao out of the Metal Stone tribe. As to where he was headed, Dot Ning didn't inform anyone. Only by acting in such a way would he make it harder for Serpent Wing to find him. Dash 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 dash. A month after the Serpent Wing disaster, everything was calm again. Originally, after Serpent Wing broke through to the peak Xianshan level, he charged out of Serpent Wing Lake, beginning to vent his fury upon the area, causing great harm to the nearby tribes and devouring many humans, filling countless tribesmen with fear. He boldly went out in search of Ning, but the news that Ning was adventuring was a secret which few knew. Given that Ning himself was extremely vigilant as well, Serpent Wing naturally couldn't find him. After half a month, Serpent Wing encountered Ji Yichuan. Relying on his vastly increased strength, Serpent Wing confidently did battle with him, but he didn't expect that once again, he would be badly injured. Still, his flying speed was much faster than before, and when he fled for his life, even Yichuan wasn't able to do anything to him. This battle resulted in Serpent Wing coming to a decision, he never wanted to fight against Yichuan ever again. If he saw Yichuan, he would immediately run far away. Another month later, Poison Doveridge stepped in. The five prefectures of the G clan negotiated with Poison Doveridge, and the end result was Dot Dire Monster, Serpent Wing, is forbidden to leave Serpent Wing Lake for a hundred years. Dot. Time passed. In the blink of an eye, summer arrived. Within East Mount Marsh. Two figures lay hidden within the aquatic grass. One was a half-red, half-white man with a vile aura and braided hair, while the other was a muscular man dressed in black. The information you have is correct? The vile-looking man said softly. We've waited here for three days now. The black-clothed man nodded. Recently, there is a youngster who often comes to fight against the Azure Sky's Nick King. Every ten or fifteen days, they'll do battle. In addition, their battles are generally in the area around here. Don't worry, Master. When the time comes, the Azure Sky's Nick King will definitely emerge from the depths, and once he enters our formation, he won't be able to escape. All right. The vile man nodded. For the sake of this day, I have prepared for so long, and also spent an incredible price in order to acquire this Yin and Yang twin energy formation. This time, we must capture the Azure Sky's Nick King alive and let it become my spirit beast. Once the Azure Skies Nick King enters the formation, its life and death will be entirely determined by you, Master. The black-clothed man said. Ha ha ha. The vile man laughed gently. Right. That youth who often fights against the Azure Skies Nick King, do you know who he is? I've never seen him. The black-clothed man shook his head. I know all of the young geniuses of our Ironwood clan, and he isn't one of them. It seems as though this youngster's sword techniques are based on the G Clan's, Rindrop Sutra. G Clan? A fierce look flashed through the vile man's eyes. For him to be able to fight equally at such a young age with the Azure Skies Nick King means that when he grows up, he'll most likely become yet another Yichu on dot since that's the case, then I, Ironwood Son, will give the G Clan a hand and help them send their genius straight to the Yellow Springs of Hell. Time passed. Another half day went by. It was now sunset, and in the distance, a fur clad youngster appeared, walking atop of the waves. Master, he's here! the black clothed man hurriedly shouted. Zahn turned and looked. Seeing that Ning was walking on water as though it were flat ground, his pupils shrank. One with the world. He must die. 
Zahn's heart was now filled with a killing urge. At such a young age, this person was able to reach the one with the world level. Once this terrifying youngster grew up, he would be far more powerful than even the raindrop sword, Ji Yijuan. He might even become the most powerful figure in the five prefectures of the Ji clan. Brethren, Iron Wood Zan hurriedly instructed. Afterwards, you go deal with that youth. Even if you can kill him, don't let him get away. After I subdue the Azure Skies Nick King, I'll immediately hurry over. Yes. The black clothed man said respectfully. Iron Woodson stared grimly into the distance. To be able to reach the one with the world level as a youth. The sort of monstrous talent was countless times more talented than him, Iron Woodson. Fortunately, he, Zahn, had been training for over a hundred years. Relying on his years of accumulated strength, it would still be simplicity itself for him to slay this little child. Dot. Zahn was hiding within the aquatic grasses, and had secretly set up the formation in the area around this location. Neither their oars nor their voices would penetrate through it. If even their oars couldn't pass through, then of course, there was no way to sense them. Ning, thus, also didn't sense their presence either. Little snaky snake. Ning stood on the surface of the water as he called out. Still not coming out? His voice transmitted directly into the depths of the water. A moment later. Boom. An enormous emerald serpent erupted forth from the waves, and then its body rapidly shrank to a length of around 10 meters, while its head stared, swaying, at Ning while emitting a disdainful snort. Actually, over the course of his multiple battles against Ning, the Azure Skies Nick King had gained some insights as well. The Azure Skies Nick King had the feeling that he too was about to reach the one with the world level. Although his battle ability was astonishing, he primarily relied on his natural gifts. In terms of skill level, he was inferior to Ji Ning. This sort of utterly ruthless battles against an opponent, with both using deadly, lethal blows, was the best way for an individual to improve. Once I also reach the one with the world level, you will definitely die. The Azure Skies Nick King secretly said to himself. Ha ha, come here, little snaky snake. Two swords appeared out of nowhere in Ning's hands. Hua. The Azure Skies Nick King flashed towards him like a bolt of green lightning, while Ning went forward to welcome him. Dot. Zon, hiding in the distant aquatic grass, felt even more astonished. His sword play is also at the one with the world level and he uses twin swords to such a perfect degree. It seems he isn't even a Xianchen life form yet, but he is able to fight head-on with a Xianchen level god beast. This sort of talent is absolutely terrifying. He must be destroyed as soon as possible. Why haven't they entered yet? Almost. Ironwood Zong grew frantic with impatience. He had laid down his formation in advance. Although the formation took up a large amount of space, there was some distance between the formation and Ning's battle with the Azure Skies Nick King. Almost. Ironwood Zahn's heart was frantic, but he had to suppress his impatience. Because he knew that once he revealed himself. The frightened Azure Skies Nick King would instantly dive into the water, at which point he wouldn't have any chance at all to deal with him. All he could do was watch as the distant battle continued. Sometimes, Ning would be sent flying, while at other times, a wound would appear on the body of the Azure Skies Nick King. The two battled amidst the waves, with Ning constantly gliding atop the waves, sometimes charging forward, other times dodging. On multiple occasions, they almost entered the formation, but the end, they did an apostrophe T. This truly was nerve-wracking. Swish. On one exchange of blows. Therein. Zahn's eyes were red. At this moment, Ning and the Azure Skies Nick King had just barely entered the formation. They were at the very edges of it. But Zan no longer dared to wait any longer. Perhaps in the next moment, Ning and the Azure Skies Nick King would once more leave the area of the formation. Up. Zan's face was fierce. Huh? Ning, at the borders of the formation, suddenly felt a thrill race through his mind. This was because Ning's soul was already extremely powerful so much so that he could unconsciously sense any deadly dangers nearby. 
an invisible terror suddenly filled Ning's head, and he had the feeling that if he didn't move, he might really die. Retreat. Ning glided backwards at maximum speed, and as he did so, he just so happened to leave the edges of the formation. Dot. As Ning retreated past the edges of the formation, he saw that the surface of the water in front of him suddenly transformed into a scene of chaos. One enormous white energy wave after another appeared, intersecting with enormous black energy waves, creating countless nets covering the area in front of him. The power of this enormous formation made Ning's heart shake. This was something set up by a late-stage Xi'an key refiner, who then suddenly released all the terrifying power he had previously placed in the surrounding area. The Azure Sky's Nick King is within the formation. Ning's heart clenched. After having battled with this old opponent so many times, seeing that the opponent had fallen into the formation, Ning felt worry for him as well. Gruul. A black human figure suddenly flew into the air, transforming into a black bat and tiger that was over 30 meters long. The furry mane around its neck was spread out like an enormous fan, rising up to the heads. Its jade eyes were filled with savage fury, and it pounced directly towards Ning. A bat and tiger? Ning instantly understood who it was that had set up the massive formation. The only Xianxian life form who has a bat and tiger as his spirit beast is Ironwood Zon. Of the Ironwood clan. A late stage science and expert. Gotta go. Ning knew very well the difference in power between the two of them. Ironwood Zon was extremely famous, and was legendary for how sinister he was. When he used his magic treasures, even the Azure Sky's Nick King was far from being his match. Swish. Suddenly, a black light shot towards Ning. With a quick sword stroke and a clang sound, Ning sent the black light flying back towards that Xianxian level Ba and Tiger. The Ba and Tiger roared, Child of the G Clan, today, shall be the day of your death. Arg! A sharp, ear piercing scream of pain shook the heavens, emanating from within that formation. Ning couldn't help but feel his heart shudder as well. He knew that this was the desolate cry of the Azure Sky's Nick King. Despite having fought with Ning for so long, the Azure Sky's Nick King had never before let out such a miserable sound. Clearly, it truly was in dire straits this time. Little Green Snake, I hope you'll be able to survive this affair. Ning could only silently pray. Not daring to hesitate at all, he immediately began to flee across the surface of the lake while blocking the furious attacks of that Xianxian level but and tiger. Chapter 1 heart filled with murderous intent. Don't think of escaping. The Ba and Tiger roared furiously, while at the same time chasing after Jin Ning on water at high speed. But with each step, waves exploded beneath his feet. After all, it had yet to reach the one with the world level. It had to rely on its released monstrous energy to forcibly walk atop the water. In addition, it was only a land-based beast to begin with. Naturally, its running speed was even slower. Actually, even in the mountains, the forests, or the plains, its speed would probably still be slightly lower than Ning's, much less now, on water. It could only watch as Ning quickly escaped. GRRRR. The Ba and Tiger could only return. Staring at that ferocious battle going on within that massive formation, the Azure Sky's Nick King, occasionally expanding while occasionally contracting, the Tiger mused. How can this Azure Sky Snake possibly resist the magical formation? No matter how long it struggles, in the end, it will have to submit. Dash 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 dash. The formation called upon the natural power of the world and had unimaginable strength. This Yin Yang twin energy formation's power was far beyond the ability of the Azure Sky Snake to resist. Ha ha ha. Ironwood Sun stood atop the water pointing at the distant enormous emerald snake, which was currently entangled by those countless streams of black and white energy. Azure Sky Snake, now that you have fallen into my formation, no matter how much you struggle, it is useless. Best obediently surrender and acknowledge me as master. That way, you'll suffer a bit less. Gruul. The Azure Sky Snake raised its head, roaring with fury. You don't submit? Although Zon didn't understand, he could sense the Azure Sky Snake's fury and enmity. He immediately laughed coldly, Azure Sky Snake, in this boundless world, 
it is the human race which is truly in charge. It is the Grand Shia dynasty who has unified this land. No matter how powerful you are, God Beast, what can you really do? Even if I release you, others will come to capture you. I think you had best obediently submit to me. Ironwood Son was speaking non-stop. But no matter what he said, the Azure Skies Nick didn't pay attention to him, causing Zon to truly grow angry. Fine, then. I want to watch and see. If your bones are tougher, or if my yin yang twin energy formation is tougher. Crackle. Black and white energy streams were wildly wrapping about it like a millstone, grinding the Azure Skies Nick's scales to the point of shattering, with its jade blood staining the water below. But this scale ripping, flesh tearing pain couldn't make the Azure Skies Nick lower its proud head in the slightest. Shua. The Azure Skies Nick suddenly shrank to the thickness of a finger, temporarily escaping the entanglement of the black and white energy streams, but immediately afterwards, the energy streams once more wildly wrapped around it. The energy continued to dissipate and reform without end. How arduous would it be to avoid these energy streams? Uh -uh. The finger-thick, miniature Azure Skies Nick let out a fierce cry, suddenly transforming to an enormous size once again even larger than serpent wing. Sometimes large, sometimes small, it continuously struggled. Only in this way would it be able to reduce the amount of time the yin-yang energy streams ground down upon it. After all, that grinding sensation truly, truly was painful. At the same time the little Azure Skies Nick was struggling, it was repeatedly trying to pounce towards Zon as well. But the power of the yin-yang twin energy formation was simply too great not giving it the slightest chance to draw near Zon. Struggling repeatedly, the wounds on its body grew greater and greater. Its scales were shattered, and its jade blood leaked out. Yaaaaa! Yaaaaa! One fierce cry after another. The Azure Skies Nick King was still struggling. As a monstrous beast, it was incomparably arrogant. How could it submit to this human in front of it? If it was a human Saifu disciple, Perhaps the Azure Skies Nick would have been willing to lower its head, but this Ironwood Zon wasn't qualified. Huh? After a long time, Zon began to frown. How is it still struggling? Zon stared at the Azure Skies Nick, still incomparably wild despite being badly injured and being covered in wounds. Although only part of the Yin Yang Twin Energy Formation's power has been released, if it keeps on acting like this, it will be ground to death by the yin yang twin energy formation. Can it be that it would rather die than submit to me? Zon gritted his teeth. With a thought, he caused the black and white energy streams binding the Azure Skies Nick to begin to dissipate. Azure Skies Nick. Zon pointed at the wounded, exhausted dire monster. I relied on the formation to suppress you, so most likely, you aren't convinced. Then you and I shall do battle. I won't rely on the assistance of the formation. As long as you can defeat me, I will release you. But if you lose, then you'll submit to me. Agreed? Yeah. Uh, uh. The Azure Skies Nick let out a few vicious sounds, then transformed to a length of 10 or so meters. This was the most powerful form it could transform into. And then, it pounced towards Zon. HMPH. A long black whip appeared out of nowhere in Ironwood Zon's right hand. The whip had multiple natural growing sharp nails embedded into it. This long black whip was the magic treasure, Black Woodvine Whip. It was one of the famous magic treasures of the Ironwood clan. With a powerful whipping motion, he sent the whip towards the Azure Sky Snake, and it transformed into an enormous black blur. Shua! Shua! The Azure Sky Snake rapidly dodged managing to move past this whip. Wawawa! Ironwood Zon continued to brandish the long whip in his hand. The whip spun in circle upon circle, covering the skies in countless enveloping circles towards the Azure Sky Snake. And then, with a ripping sound, the Azure Sky Snake lost yet another piece of scale and flesh from its body. SSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSS
and was completely able to counter the Azure Sky Snake's agility. However, the Azure Sky Snake was capable of fleeing very quickly. In the past, Zon wasn't able to do anything about it, but now that the Azure Sky Snake was trapped within the formation, there was nowhere for it to run. What do you think? Zon stood there, long whip dancing, with each whipping blow containing a power capable of cracking a small mountain, causing the Azure Sky Snake's body to crack open on multiple locations. My strength is greater than yours. You had best obediently submit. Pa. The magic treasures slammed against its body. Given that Zon himself was a late stage science expert, he was completely capable of suppressing it. Swoosh. This time, as it dodged past through Dancing Long Whip, the Azure Sky Snake suddenly disappeared, and then reappeared a few dozen meters away. Ironwood Zon was astonished, but immediately afterwards, his face changed greatly. SSSSSSS. The Azure Sky Snake called out in excitement, while at the same time, with every single slithering motion of its body, it seemed to teleport dozens of meters, if not even farther. Die. Ironwood Zon's face was ferocious, and he seemed to have gone insane. Rumble. The formation shuddered, and large amounts of black and white energy vicious slammed down towards the Azure Sky Snake, but the Azure Sky Snake only glanced icily at Ironwood Zon, then disappeared with another slither. Bang. The black and white energy collided, transforming into large amounts of chaotic energy. Damnable. Ironwood Zon howled madly, fists waving furiously. Damnable. Void blank. Void blank. Ironwood Zon's face was ferocious, and his eyes were red and insane. This Azure Sky Snake is actually capable of using void blank. Right. It is due to that child of the G Clan. That child of the G Clan has battled against the Azure Sky Snake repeatedly. It must be that this has caused the Azure Sky Snake to improve, allowing it to reach the one with the world level and be able to utilize the void blank. Ironwood Zon was utterly enraged. Although there was only a single Azure Sky Snake in the Swallow Mountain area, there were quite a few in the boundless territory ruled over by the Grand Shia dynasty. Thus, Ironwood Zon knew very well how powerful Azure Sky Snakes were, which was why he so desperately wanted to tame this one. Generally speaking, dire monsters were capable of controlling water, or poison, or fire, or sun on and so forth. Even the likes of the aquatic rhino king and serpent wing, non-god beast creatures, had this ability. But as a god beast, the Azure Sky Snake King didn't have a special ability. But actually, it still had something. Only, the Azure Sky Snake King's natural ability was simply too powerful. While it was at a low level of power, it wasn't capable of utilizing it. Much like how a normal monstrous beast wasn't capable of controlling water at the Haoshan stage but was able to at the Xianshan stage, this Azure Sky Snake King's natural ability had to do with a void. Even after it reached the Xianshan life form level, it still had to reach the one with the world level before it was capable of instantly becoming one with a void, allowing it to utilize the void blink technique. Void blink. Iron would son ground his teeth. A Azure Sky Snake King capable of developing the void blink technique will quickly become incomparably powerful. The void blink. This allowed the Azure Sky Snake to be capable of going to some very secretive places and even go steal some of the world spirit fruits. This represented that its growing speed was about to enter a phase of explosive growth. Without question, this Azure Sky Snake King was about to leave East Mount Marsh and begin an adventuring journey. After all, only by going to other places would it be capable of acquiring more natural treasures and grow more rapidly in power. If it always stayed here comfortably, it would be a waste of its talent. Given the amount of hatred it bears me, in the future, when it returns to Swallow Mountain, it might come looking for me seeking revenge. Zon was both furious and frightened. Aar. Uh, uh, Ironwood Zon bellowed in fury, the sound of his roars causing even the water to explode. He was furious. All because of that G-Clan child. Ironwood Zon ground his teeth, filled with utter hatred. If Jinling hadn't caused the Azure Sky's Nick King to advance so rapidly. How could it have suddenly made a breakthrough during this battle? Most likely, Zon would have already tamed the Azure Sky Snake. Now, 
he not only had been unable to tame it, he had also offended a powerful future enemy. The Azure Sky Sneak would definitely remember this grudge. Dash dash dash. The massive formation vanished. Ironwood Zon collected all eight of the formation flags, then walked out atop the water, a sinister, shadowy look on his face. Master. The Baton Tiger transformed into a black clothed man, flying over. Seeing the look on his master's face, he knew that the taming attempt had failed. He hurriedly said, Master, don't be angry. This Azure Sky Sneak was simply too foolish. It was its own fault that Master killed it. It didn't die. Ironwood Zon said coldly. It didn't die? The black clothed was astonished. Then it? Ironwood Zon shook his head. It actually managed to comprehend the void blink technique. It fled. But but but. The black clothed man found it hard to believe as well. The Azure Sky Sneak had actually managed to comprehend the void blink technique at the critical juncture. All of it is the fault of that G-Clan child. Zon said coldly. His power was on par with the Azure Sky Snake. After repeated battles, the Azure Sky Snake has improved greatly. Thus, during this battle, it suddenly sensed the world, allowing it to become one with the Void and use the Void Blink technique. This G-Clan's child ruined everything. I will definitely strip his skin and rip his tendons. Otherwise, I won't be able to get rid of this fury in my heart. The black-clothed man nodded repeatedly. Master. Don't worry. Before this, I shot several of my back spikes at him, which are stained with the ice flower liquid. Some of the ice flower liquid has already gotten onto his body. As long as we release the ice wasp, we'll definitely be able to find him. Fine. Zon withdrew a gray sack from his waist. Loosening the sack, a semi translucent, gem like wasp flew out at high speed. Pursue. Zon and the butt and tiger followed behind the ice wasp at high speed. After they left, a green snake suddenly emerged atop the peaceful water. The green snake stared from afar, a look of hope in its eyes. After it had battled against Jining so many times, the two of them were evenly matched for so long. In addition, Ning had helped contribute to it being able to break through to the one with the world level of movement technique and comprehend the void blink technique. It felt some gratitude towards Ning. SSSSSS. The Azure Sky Snake let out a soft sound. It hoped Ning would be able to escape. It had already done what it was capable of. After all, although right now, he had very formidable fleeing abilities, in terms of actual power, he was far from being Iron with Zon's match. Chapter 2 Comprehending the Way by the Pond. Ji Ning, relying on his one with the world footwork technique, ran at high speed, as fast as the wind. After leaving East Mount Marsh, he continued to flee at high speed, moving most likely over a thousand kilometers through the mountain forests before coming to a halt. Actually, by now, the Golden Crow, the sun, had already completely sunk beneath the horizon. However, the eastern horizon was still very red, and there was still some light cast on the ground. Phew! Ning wiped the sweat from his forehead. I first ran 300 kilometers on water, then another thousand kilometers on land. In addition, I was moving at my maximum speed. I've never run like this before. I didn't expect that even with a body like mine, I still ended up so sweaty. Ning usually could run for a thousand kilometers on East Mountain Marsh without sweating at all, but this time, he really had moved at his utmost speed. Feeling exhausted, Ning slowly walked forward. There was a pool in front of him, and within the pool, there were a few floating lotus flowers. The flowers were not stained at all by the mud, and their stems were straight. The fragrance of the lotuses entered his nose, causing the exhausted Ning to let out a hint of a smile as he sat down next to the pool. I guess I managed to make it through that setback. Ning withdrew a bamboo reed with a flip of his hand. The reed was filled with clean water. Raising his head, he took two gulps. I wonder how the little green snake is doing. Ning sighed lightly. Little green snake, don't blame me. I'm not able to help you either. Alas, I haven't reached the Xianchen level. Xianchen. Just thinking about this made Ning feel a hint of worry. The crimson bright diagram of the nine heavens, as the most powerful fiended body refining method, 
was extremely powerful, but training it was simply too difficult. Even someone with his background found it so hard to break through. Merge yin and yang, fuse fire and water. How was this accomplished? What do I need to do in order to break through? Ning pondered bitterly. Who? A gentle breeze blew by. The cool, summer night breeze was so comfortable. The breeze wafted through the lotus flowers in the pool. Some spun in place, first towards one direction, then towards the other. Having reached the one with the world level in the shade wind steps, Ning naturally was able to mentally become one with the wind. When the wind blew past the lotus blossom, he could clearly sense. Huh? Ning suddenly revealed a look of curiosity. When the wind blows the lotus, it turns both left, then right. Ning suddenly felt as though he understood something. If a leaf is blown by the wind, it will be blown wildly without any rhythm at all. If it was a small tree that was being blown down by the wind, it would only shake from left to right. That's because it doesn't have any enormous round leaves. But when the lotus flower is blown upon, the petals of the lotus can turn left or turn right, cancelling out this force. Raising his head, Ning stared at the sky. It wasn't completely dark yet, but in the skies, he could already faintly see the light of the moon. The golden crow, sun, falls, and the moon rabbit, moon, rises. Turn left, turn right. Day and night. Because there is day, thus there is the concept of night. Ning murmured to himself. In a place of utter darkness, a tiny hand of light is incomparably brilliant. The left and right turns of the lotus petal allow it to cancel out the two contrasting spins, allowing it to cancel out the force of the wind and stay in place, unmoved. Ning closed his eyes. His spirit was already one with the world, and he became one with the wind and the lotus flowers in the pool. He could faintly sense some sort of enormous principle, which hid ancient secrets that had existed since the creation of the endless universe. This secret was the Tao, the way. The wind held the Tao within it, and the Tao itself was vast and unknowable. But when the wind blew past the lotus flower, Ning was capable of seeing the shadow of the Tao flash through the lotus flowers, capable of finding a hint of the movements and the true appearance of the Tao. Ning quietly sat there in the lotus position by the side of the pool, completely lost in thought as he attentively meditated on the hint of the Tao which he had sensed from the lotus flower's circular movements. Dash 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 dash. Comprehending the Tao was something that one could hope for but not ask for. In that moment when his soul, his thoughts, the environment, and everything else all fused together, he was able to just barely touch a hint of the Tao. But in order to touch the Tao. The prerequisite was that one would first have to become one with the world. Only after one's mind could completely become one with the world was one capable of touching the eternal Tao. Wawawa. A stream of water slowly flowed through a small creek covered up by the wild grass. Goo goo. Night descended, and the forest was now filled with the croaking of frogs. Slowly. Rays of light began to surround Ning, still seated in the lotus position. First, some rays of watery light appeared, slowly forming one enormous lotus petal after another around him. One watery lotus petal after another surrounded Ning, currently blossoming while swaying gently in the breeze. Immediately afterwards, dots of fiery light began to gather as well, forming into fiery lotus petals. These enormous lotus petals of flame you also wrapped around Ning. Two layers of lotus petals. The first layer was of watery lotus petals. The second was of fiery lotus petals. Each layer had exactly three petals. Who? Fire and water intersected. A wind arose out of nowhere. Wawawa. Between the two layers of lotus petals, a wind arose out of nowhere. The two layers of lotus petals began to swivel. The lower layer of watery lotus petals swiveled to the left while the upper layer of fiery lotus petals were turning to the right. The two layers of lotus petals were completely turning in opposite directions. Slowly, sluggishly, they rotated, but Ning himself didn't utilize any of his own strength at all. Everything happened by nature. Swoosh! A gray-furred wolf loped out from within the forests, its jade eyes focused on that distant, fur-clad youth. Only, those enormous lotus petals, multiple meters in size, which were surrounding that fur-clad youth made the wolf slightly confused. 
as a beast with low intelligence, however, its innate sense was telling it that those rotating petals of fire and water were nothing more than part of the world, just like the clouds. There was no need to pay attention to them. The gray wolf bared its fangs, staring at the fur clad youth. It was very hungry. The fur clad youth was just sitting there without moving, as though he was asleep. He definitely wouldn't have the ability to fight back. In addition, the flesh of this youth seemed so tender and delectable. The gray wolf could already feel its saliva coming into its mouth. It hesitated no more. Swoosh! The gray wolf charged forward rapidly, pouncing forward with fangs bared, preparing to bite down on that fur clad youth. But as soon as it leapt within two meters of those layers of lotus petals, boom! The wind created by those two layers of lotus petals contained within them a hint of the destructive force of the world. In an instant, it chopped that wolf into tiny pieces, with blood splattering everywhere, some seeping deep into the earth, while the rest flowed into the pool. Dash 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 dash. Nightfall. Ironwood Zon and the butt and tiger he commanded, in the former of a black clothed man, were currently following behind that ice wasp as they traversed the mountain forests. The ice wasp was just a wasp, after all. It wasn't an enormous flying beast, nor was it a dire monster. One could imagine how much slower it was. It was far from being even a tenth as fast as Ning. This child of the G clan really can run. Ironwood Zahn's face was gloomy and sinister. After leaving East Mount Marsh, he kept on fleeing. The black clothed man said hurriedly, Master, the ice hornet's flying speed is much slower. If this child of the G clan keeps running without stopping, all the way to one of the prefectures of the five prefectures of the G clan, we probably won't have any way to catch him. Run all the way to one of the five prefectures? Ironwood Zahn shook his head. Too far. East Mount Marsh is already at the borders of the G clan's territory. To run from the border to one of the five prefectures at once? That child of the G clan shouldn't run that far. Although he said this, in his heart, Zahn was worried as well. If Ning truly had run to any one of the five prefectures, no matter how confident Zahn was in his abilities, he wouldn't dare to charge into the lair of his enemies. We'll slowly pursue him. Ironwood Zahn said. Wherever the ice flower liquid passes by, it will leave that unique aroma. It won't dissipate for at least three days. We can't smell it, but the ice wasp can. As long as that child of the G clan doesn't flee to the five prefecture, he will die. Right, he will die. The black clothed man said hurriedly. He ruined everything for me, and caused me to have a powerful future foe. Ironwood Zahn could visualize that Azure Sky's Nick adventuring in the outside world through the usage of its void blink, becoming more powerful, reaching the Zaifu level, then coming back to kill him. He couldn't help but feel fear, while at the same time, he hated Jinning even more. I definitely have to personally tear his skin off and rent his tendons. Right. Tear his skin, rip his tendons. The black clothed man ground his teeth as well. Dash 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 dash. The golden crow, sun, was beginning to raise its head over the eastern skies. It was daybreak. Ironwood Zahn and the butt and tiger under his command were still slowly pursuing. They had pursued for so long, both of them had bellies full of anger. This child of the G clan really was too cautious. After leaving East Mount Marsh, he had actually fled for at least another thousand kilometers. A ice wasp that flew for a thousand kilometers would be very tired as well. Fortunately, this ice wasp was immune. Master. The black clothed man's eyes lit up, and he hurriedly pointed to the distant. Huh? The also tired Zahn turned to look in that direction. Instantly. He could make out an indistinct human figure at the distant side of a pool. This caused his mind to instantly wake up. Ironwood Zahn's eyes lit up. He licked the corner of his lips, then said mentally, Let's go take a look. Between Master and Spirit Beast, at a close distance, there was the ability to maintain psychic communications. As for the exact distance, it depended on how powerful their souls were. Generally speaking, a Xianchen life form and his spirit beast had to maintain a distance of 10 meters if they wanted to be able to converse mentally. The two carefully crept forward, 
trying not to make any noise. But in truth, even if they made some noise, Zahn wasn't afraid. He was, after all, a late-stage science and expert. When running at full speed, he was a bit faster than even Jinning, and in addition, he carried on him a divine movement seal as well as a number of other ordinary Tao seals. How could he possibly allow Ning to escape? What an idiot! No matter how careful I am, I still am making some noise, but he didn't notice at all. He should be a fiend good body refiner. Logically speaking, he should have excellent senses. HMPH, HMPH, he really has no experience at all. He's probably fallen asleep. Zahn laughed coldly. All the better. It will make my life easier. Otherwise, I'd have to waste a divine movement seal. Ironwood Zahn and the black-clothed man continued moving forward. Slowly. They could make the person out clearly. What? They were both stunned. This was because the sun had already risen by now. Under the light of the sun, those enormous fiery lotus petals and the watery lotus petals appeared semi-translucent. After all, these lotus petals were not real lotus petals. They were formed by the energy of the world. Under the light of the sun, they instantly appeared semi-translucent. The two layers of enormous lotus petals were still slowly swiveling in opposite directions, but contained within them a very strange rhythm. In the center of these two enormous layers of rotating lotus petals, Ning was seated there in the lotus position. What dot what is this? Zon although highly experienced, had never seen a sign like this. Can it be that this is created from internal key? Still, even if he has broken through to the Xianchen life form stage, he is still only an early stage Xianchen. I imagine he doesn't have any magic treasures on him. A fierce look appeared on Zan's face. Chapter 3, Fire and Water Descend, Giving Birth to Xianchen Ironwood Zan and his butt and tiger drew near at high speed, quickly arriving by the side of the pool. It really is beautiful. Ironwood Zahn couldn't help but sigh in amazement as he stared at the reflecting light of the setting sun, which shone down upon those two blooming, enormous lotus petals. But the more he looked at them, the more nervous he became. He was, after all, a late-stage science and expert. Although he hadn't reached the one with the world level, he could already dimly sense how extraordinary those two layers of petals were. Master. The butt and tiger looked at Zahn as well. What should we do now? Don't be impatient. He is in front of us and won't be able to escape. Let's give him a test, first. Zahn instructed mentally. With a wave of his hand, he released his Zianchen force, which directly dragged a rock into his hand. And then, with a powerful throw, he infused this rock with his Zianchen energy, transforming it into a ray of light which shot straight towards Jinning still seated in the lotus position. Although he just threw a rock, a nine fang warrior would definitely be killed. Hua. When the stone reached the area of 10 meters of Ning and intersected with those two layers of lotus petals, it instantly became frozen. That invisible killing energy, with a hiss, transformed the rock into dust. The Ba and Tiger and Ironwood Zan both felt their hearts tighten. They exchanged glances. Clearly, they were somewhat puzzled by those two mysterious lotus layers. I refuse to believe it. Zahn sneered coldly, and the black wood vine whip appeared in his hands out of nowhere. Who? Ironwood Zahn lashed out with his long whip. The black wood vine whip elongated, coiling around a thick nearby tree. With a massive pull. Hung along dot the entire tree was ripped out by the roots, carrying with it a large amount of dirt, swinging about along with Zahn's whip. Boom. This tens of thousands of pounds heavy tree smashed directly towards Ning, seated in the lotus position. When the massive tree trunk slammed against those two layers of translucent, enormous lotus leaves, it instantly shattered apart. However, the terrifying power of the collision contained within the massive tree caused the two layers of lotus leaves to tremble. Ning, who had been meditating in the lotus position, shook slightly. His eyes opened up. As his eyes opened, he saw that the two enormous lotus leaves surrounding his body were dissipating as an enormous tree trunk smashed down upon him. In the distance, Ironwood Zahn and that black-clothed man were sneering coldly at him. You ruined my good fortune. 
watching the two layers of enormous lotus petals dissipate, Ning instantly realized what he had gained this night, and also realized how priceless these insights had been. If nobody had disturbed him, he probably would have been able to gain insights for even longer. But unexpectedly, Zan had ruined it for him. It must be understood that these moments of enlightenment were something which could only be hoped for and not asked for. It might be decades, if not centuries, until the next time something like this would occur. Damn you! Ning swept out with a bomb, and with a booming sound, smashed that massive tree trunk into two halves. One half landed into the middle of the pond, crushing many of the lotus flowers. The other half fell down against several other nearby trees, sending dust everywhere. Little child of the G clan! Ironwood Zon laughed ferociously. You fled a thousand kilometers into the forest, but I still caught you in the end. Today is the day you die. Ning glanced at him coldly, and then immediately summoned forth the lunar energy and the solar energy in his body. Over the course of the previous night's meditation, he had gained just a hint of insight into the true nature of the Tao, but that hint of insight was enough to allow him to understand, without question, what the method was for breaking through to the next level of the Crimson Bright Diagram of the Nine Heavens. Nothing in the world was truly opposite of anything else. It was much like how night and day were seemingly opposites, but in reality, were just two different aspects of the sky. It was much like the two layers of fire and water lotus petals that had surrounded him. Not only did they not cancel each other out, they had even increased each other's power. Why? A lotus flower had a stalk, which was what allowed the lotus petals to swivel. The stalk of the two layers of fire and water lotus petals was Ning himself. Solar energy, lunar energy. How to fuse them? By finding that stalk which connected the solar energy and the lunar energy. Come. Ning's eyes were filled with absolutely certainty. His body had already completely brought forth all of his solar and lunar energy, which instantly filled every part of his body. Be it his hair or his skin or his organs or his very cells. It filled every part of him. Every single thread of lunar energy and solar energy began to swirl around each other, but their natures caused him to be unwilling to fuse. Wawa! Wow, wow. All of the lunar energy and solar energy were swiveling, like the lotus flowers that had been blown upon by the wind. They were also like the two fish of the yin yang taiji diagram, forever chasing each other. The sun, the moon. They constantly chased after each other. And as they did, they contained that hint of the Tao which Ning had understood. Slowly, in the center of the circling solar energy and lunar energy, a new force arose. Instantly. In that deep, boundless void, separated from this place by incomprehensibly many worlds, there lay the two supreme stars, the solar star, sun, and the lunar star, moon. Each of them emitted a hint of their power, the solar true fire and the lunar true water appeared on each side around Ning and also activated the power of fire and water of the surrounding world. Bang! Bang! The surrounding world instantly became filled with a sea of flame as well as an abyss of water. Though this took time to describe, in truth, as soon as Ning had shattered that tree, he had immediately activated the energy in his body and began to break through. Ironwood Zon and his Ba and Tiger saw with their own eyes the boundless flames and water appear out of nowhere, causing even them to feel fear. Wherever the water passed through, everything was frozen into ice sculptures, while wherever the fire passed through, everything was consumed by the flames. At the same time, within the surging water, the faint outline of the jade rabbit could be seen. Deep within the boundless flames, there was also the shadow of a three-legged golden crow. Between the jade rabbit and the golden crow, there was Ning. This dot this. Zan was so shocked, his face changed dramatically. Can this be the legendary dot the legendary, crimson bright diagram of the nine heavens? The golden crow and the jade rabbit had both appeared. Without question, this was the legendary, crimson bright diagram of the nine heavens, the number one fiended body refining technique. In the entire Swallow Mountain area, in at least the past thousand years, there hadn't been a single person who was known to have relied on this technique to become a Zionshin life form. Although Zan had read this technique and knew what the breakthrough looked like, 
This was his first time personally witnessing the amazing spectacle of a breakthrough. HRMPH. Ironwood Zahn's hand summoned a formation flag out of nowhere. He immediately flew backwards, then began running around Ning, surrounded by boundless water and fire, in a circular pattern, while constantly throwing out one flag after another, all of which stabbed deep into the mud. In but a few seconds, eight formation flags had all been planted, covering an area of a square kilometer. Ironwood Zahn now simply stood from afar and watched. Master, kill him! The butt and tiger said hurriedly. Right now, he is breaking through. This is his weakest moment. No! Zahn hurriedly shouted. He trains in the number one fiend good body refining, and is currently surrounded by the power of the supreme stars, the solar star and the lunar star. When breaking through to the Xianchen life form level, these two supreme stars will send down a hint of their solar true fire and lunar true water breaking through countless barriers to allow him to evolve and be reborn into the body of a true Xianchen level Fiendgud. Then it becomes all the more important for us to stop him, the butt and tiger said frantically. Don't you understand? Ironwood Zahn's face was ashen as he stared at the distant Ning, wrapped by the endless flames and water. Right now, he is surrounded by boundless icy water and cocooned in flames. At the heart of the boundless icy water is a hint of the lunar true water. At the heart of the endless flames is a hint of the solar true fire. Even if a Zaifu disciple were to touch it, he would instantly be frozen and shatter or be burned to ashes, much less you and me. Not even his soul would be left. He wouldn't even have the chance to go to the nether world kingdom to be reborn. As fearsome as that? The butt and tiger was shocked. Of course it is. Ironwood Zahn's face was solemn. This is power which comes from the two supreme stars. Solar true fire and lunar true water. Who dares to touch them? Then, then are we just going to watch? The butt and tiger said frantically. Just watch as this child of the G clan becomes even more powerful? Don't worry. Zahn growled. Right now, the two supreme stars have bequeathed their power to him and he is beginning to transcend his mortal coil and be reborn into a true Xianchen Fiendgud. After he breaks through, that hint of solar true fire and lunar true water will disappear. After all, the power of the solar true fire and the lunar true water doesn't belong to this little child of the G-Clan himself. Ironwood Zahn sneered coldly, I've already set down the yin-yang twin energy formation. After this little child of the G-Clan breaks through, he'll no longer have the protective power of the supreme stars. I will immediately activate the formation. No matter what, he'll only be an early Xianchen life form without a single magic treasure. I, on the other hand, am a late Xianchen life form with the assistance of the formation. Right. The butt and tiger nodded as well. But this child of the G clan really is amazing. Ironwood Zahn couldn't help but sigh in praise. Crimson Bright Diagram of the Nine Heavens. This is the legendary, most powerful Fiendgood body refining technique. Virtually all tribes of a certain size are in possession of it. But in a thousand years, in the entire Swallow Mountain area, there hasn't been a single person who has reached Xianchen through it. If he is permitted to grow, he will definitely become the number one person of the five prefectures of the G Clan, and perhaps even the entire Swallow Mountain. But no matter how powerful he will be, right now, he will only have reached the Xianchen level. Ha ha dot I feel wonderful when I think about how I'm about to kill such a monstrous genius. Dash 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 dash. What did Xianchen mean? It meant to be born from the heavens and from nature. Only that was a true Xianchen life form. Generally speaking, most key refiners only had the inner key energy in their bodies transform into Xianchen afterwards the energy would wash through their entire body, allowing them to reach a quick and agile state. But actually, this was the weakest type of Xianchen body. A casual sword thrust through the heart would cause them to die. But for Fiendgood body refiners. Their entire body would be reborn into the body like a Fiendgood's. Fiend gods could have their bodies chopped into 18 parts, but as long as their head wasn't destroyed, they would not die. Generally speaking, most fiendgood body refining techniques were low grade, to the point of even relying on tattooing the divine patterns onto their bodies. 
but the crimson bright diagram of the nine heavens relied on the power of the two supreme stars to naturally generate those two major divine tattoos. When breaking through to the Xianchen level, the solar true fire and lunar true water of the two supreme stars would descend out fire and water would coincide, giving birth to a fiendgood's body. This sort of fiendgood body wasn't one bit inferior to those true bowen fiend gods of the ancient fiendgood era. Thus, this was reputed to be the number one technique in the world. Piba. Ning could sense every single cell in his body explode. And then, the divine power of the crimson bright diagram of the nine heavens, caused the solar true fire and the lunar true water to begin to reforge every single cell anew. The hint of solar true fire and lunar true water which the two supreme stars had sent down, in turn, were being utterly consumed in the process of forging this new Xianchen Fiendgood. The mortal vessel fell away. The Fiendgood body formed. Hua. The solar true fire and the lunar true water were consumed, and the countless amounts of fire and water which surrounded them dispersed as well, revealing the fur clad Jining. Although he had leapt into the Xianchen level, the furs hadn't been damaged by the fire and water at all. Only, Ning's skin was now emitting an enchanting radiance, as though he were a gem formed by the heavens. Ning opened his eyes and stared at the distant ironwood son and the Ba and Tiger. He said only two words. Now, die. The divine solar tattoo and divine lunar tattoo on his back instantly activated. Boom. Boom. An enormous flaming dragon and an enormous water dragon appeared out of nowhere, formed from the fire and water summoned by the divine solar tattoo and divine lunar tattoo. Containing terrifying destructive power, it charged straight towards the distant ironwood son and ba and tiger. This was the proof of the Xianchen level of the Crimson Bright Diagram of the Nine Heavens, the ability to control fire and water. Chapter 4, Lotus Petals of Fire and Water Ironwood Zon and the Ba and Tiger were both astonished. Zon hurriedly activated his Yin Yang Twin Energy Formation, while shouting loudly, Be careful, he can control fire and water. The ability of Xianchen Fiend Gods of the Crimson Bright Diagram of the Nine Heavens to control water and fire is extraordinary. Once water and fire come out simultaneously, even most ordinary Xianchen life forms can be killed. The reason he shouted so loudly was because as soon as the Ba and Tiger had seen the fire and water, it had already transformed into its real body and begun to retreat. Once the distance between the two increased, they were no longer capable of spiritual communication. But how could the speed of the butt and tiger compare to that of the water and fire? Boom! An enormous water dragon instantly coiled around the butt and tiger, causing a layer of frost to appear on it. At the same time, the other fire dragon also wrapped itself around the butt and tiger. The water dragon and fire dragon simultaneously coiled around it, the water dragon filled with boundless cold, while the fire dragon was filled with endless heat. Hot and cold. Pa. Pa, pa. The butt and tiger's fur began to crack, and his red flesh and muscles began to be revealed, then quickly char. Gruul. The butt and tiger roared. Still not dead. Ji Ning's gaze grew colder. The water dragon that had been coiling around the butt and tiger suddenly loosened, then quickly began to transform, changing into an enormous flowing lotus petal. At the same time, the fire dragon also quickly transformed into a blazing lotus petal. The water lotus petal was below. The fire lotus petal was above. The butt and tiger was in the middle. Despite how it tried to struggle and flee, it was useless. The two lotus petals followed it wherever it went. Water flame lotus, smelt. With a thought from Ning, instantly the two lotus petals began to slowly revolve. It was like two terrifying millstones slowly crushing down while revolving. Earlier, Ning had just been unconsciously activated the energy of the world to form those two protective lotus petals through his slight understanding of the Tao, and yet the power had already been so tremendous. But now, Ning was himself a Xianchen life form, capable of controlling both fire and water. Adding on to that basic power the hint of the Tao he had understood dot the power became hundreds of times greater than before. The petals of the water flame lotus revolved. The butt and tiger caught between them only felt a surge of heat and cold, 
and it felt far more miserable than before. Its entire body seemed to have lost all feeling. At the same time, as the water and fire intersected, a wind arose out of nowhere, and that wind filled with a powerful killing force descended directly upon the butt and tiger. Ka! The butt and tiger's charred body was like a porcelain doll. It shattered into many little pieces, its eyes filled with incomprehension as they grew dim. The butt and tiger had died. It is actually this powerful. Ning's heart was filled with surprise and delight as well. With the water and fire I control as the base, and then formed into the protective water flame lotus which I developed, I was able to execute a middle Zion Shin level dire monster, without even giving it a chance to fight back. Although the above took time to describe, a battle between experts was incredibly fast. From the moment when Ning created the water flame lotus to the moment when the butt and tiger died, only a heartbeat's worth of time had occurred. Boom! The yin yang twin energy formation which had surrounded this square kilometer fully released its power as well, and lines of black energy and white energy crisscrossed towards Ning. Ironwood San was shocked by how easily his butt and tiger has been executed as well. And then, with a savage expression, he howled within my yin yang twin energy formation. Even if you are a monstrous talent which swallow mountain seas once in a millennium, you will still surely die. Die. Lines of viper like black and white energy instantly pounds towards Ning. HRMPH. With but a thought, instantly fire and water appeared out of nowhere next to his body. The fire and water transformed into lotus petals, with two layers of enormous petals of the water flame lotus hovering about him waiting for those black and white energy streams to attack. When they did dot with a thought from Ning, the water flame lotus suddenly fused. Like a budding flower, those upward pointing lotus petals formed into a massive lotus flower bud that was over 10 meters high, instantly ensconcing Ning within them. Bing bang bing! The black and white energy waves came crashing down. The water flame lotus, although having fused into a flower bud, was still slowly swiveling. The inner layer was made of fire lotus petals, while the outer layer was made from water lotus petals. They continued to slowly swivel in opposite directions. No matter how the black and white energy struck against it time and time again, sometimes just barely breaking through the outer layer of the water lotus petals, the water lotus petals would once more reform into their normal appearance. After all, fire and water could always part and reform, they were in solid substances to begin with. Even if they were occasionally broken through, with but a thought, Ning could reform them. What? Ironwood San was shocked. How is this possible? My yin yang twin energy formation. This is an extremely powerful formation. Given my power when using it, even if I were to meet with an opponent who was a peak Zion Shin life form, I wouldn't be afraid. How could it be that it can't even break through the protective lotus of this child of the G clan? What is that protective lotus? How is it that I've never even heard of it? But how could Ironwood San know that Ning had previously already reached the one with the world level? The greatest benefit of his previous night's worth of enlightenment was dot this protective lotus, which already had a hint of the true meaning of the Tao within it. A Zion Shin life form created by the Crimson Bright Diagram of the Nine Heavens, was incomparably powerful to begin with, and the fire and water it controlled was far stronger than that of the fire and water which most dire monsters could create. When infusing that with the hint of the true Tao through the water flame lotus, blocking a mere formation nationally was nothing at all. Ironwood San, you've chased for such a long time. Let me repay you now, and send you on the next leg of your journey. Within the lotus bud, Ning stared through the flowing water lotus petals and the blazing fire lotus petals seeing the distant, unclear figure. In addition, his mind had reached the one with the world level. Naturally, he could sense the ores of all nearby creatures, and could clearly sense the location of San. Die. With but a thought from Ning. In the area where Ironwood San was standing, yet another fiery lotus petal and watery lotus petal appeared. One above him, one below him, crushing down upon San like millstones. Formation, aid me. Ironwood San, seeing the situation, was terrified. This was how his servant, the butt and tiger, had died just now. 
he hurriedly controlled the black and white energy streams, wildly wrapping them around himself to block the grinding, crushing force of this water flame lotus. By doing so, he was just barely able to block it. Although occasionally, some fire and water would break through, his Zion Shin Ki was able to block it. How can he simultaneously create two lotus flowers? Zan was filled with shock and dread. Such a powerful attack should take up almost all of his concentration. But how could he know? When he was four years old, Ning's soul was already almost on par with a Zaifu disciple. Right now, his soul was already far above that of a Zaifu disciple. Dividing his mind to execute two separate water flame lotus techniques was simplicity itself. You actually haven't died. Protected within the lotus bud, Ning quickly charged towards Ironwood Zon. Retreat. Ironwood was so frightened that his face changed. He ground his teeth. Flee. This decision was made quite decisively. He was, after all, born into the Ironwood clan. He knew very well that once someone trained to the Xianchen life form level in the Crimson Bright Diagram of the Nine Heavens, the power of the practitioner would be hundreds of times that of ordinary fiended body refiners. Although right now, Ning was only an early Xianchen life form, he was capable of matching other late stage Xianchen fiended body refiners. He, Ironwood Zon, was nothing more than a late stage Xianchen key refiner. Engage in close combat with a fiended body refiner of this level. That was just suicide. Before this, he had been relying on the fact that Ning didn't have any magic treasures, but if even the Yin Yang twin energy formation couldn't do anything to Ning, if he were to continue to fight with Ning, would that be suicide? An early Xianchen whose battle power is equivalent to a peak Xianchen. What a monster! The G clan actually produced such a monster. I definitely have to inform the ancestor and have him be exterminated as soon as possible. Otherwise, in the future, he will be a calamity to the Ironwood clan. Ironwood Zon was utterly terrified, especially by those water flame lotuses. They were simply too powerful. Formations had to be prepared in advance, but Ning's fire water lotus could be created with but a thought, and it was even more powerful than his formation. This was too. He must be eliminated. Ironwood Zon's only thought was to go back and report this to his clan's ancestor. Both the Ironwood clan and the G clan. As two of the six hegemons of the Swallow Mountain area had Saifu disciples standing guard over them. That was why they had the ability to be acknowledged by the Grand Shia dynasty to become ministers of the Grand Shia dynasty. Divine Movement Seal. With a flip of Zon's hand, a black, Leaf-like paper seal suddenly appeared out of nowhere. The paper seal was covered with what looked like veins of blood, and was covered with an ancient, strange character which faintly emanated a mysterious, rippling aura. Ironwood Zon sent a surge of his Zion Chin Ki into the seal. Hua. The seal instantly transformed into a shadowy word which fused into Ironwood Zon's body. Flee. Ironwood Zon immediately transformed into a ray of light quickly fleeing afar, not even bothering to collect his yin-yang twin energy formation flags. This was because Ironwood Zon knew very well that right now, he was still relying on the yin-yang twin energy formation to protect him against that water flame lotus. In addition, collecting those eight formation flags would also take up time. It would give that terrifying youth of the G-Clan a chance to catch up to him, at which point, he wouldn't just lose the eight formation flags he would lose his life. He ran. Ji Ning hurriedly chased afterwards. His Xianchen fiended body, matched with his one with the world footwork, caused his speed to become even more rapid. He transformed into a ray of light as well, chasing after Zon. Just slightly slower than me? Ironwood Zon was greatly shocked. Before, when he hadn't yet broken through to the Xianchen level yet, I was faster than him. But now... Even after using a precious divine movement seal, we're roughly on par. Ironwood Zon couldn't help but feel his heart ache with the cost, but grinding his teeth, he took out yet another Dao seal, covered with that same ancient network of veins atop it. He filled his Zion Chin Ki into that Dao seal. Yet another illusory word appeared, then entered his body. Light Body Seal Swoosh
Ironwood Zahn transformed into a blue blaze as he retreated even faster. Won't be able to catch him. Ning's eyes had a hint of unwillingness to accept this outcome in them. As an fiended body refiner expert, his speed was already incredible. But Ironwood Zahn had utilized two Dao seals in succession, a light body seal, and a divine movement seal. Although these seals weren't nearly as valuable as the traceless talisman, they were still able to allow Ironwood Zahn's speed to explosively increase. Ning didn't have any Dao seals right now. In addition, even if he had them, he wouldn't be able to use them, because Dao seals and magic treasures all required one to have Xianchen key in order to use them. Swoosh! Swoosh! Ironwood Zahn fled out of the area of the Yin Yang Twin Energy Formation, pulling ahead of Ning, causing Ning to be unable to utilize his Water Flame Lotus against him. This was because the Water Flame Lotus was formed through his ability to control fire and water. But there was a limit to how far Xianchen Fiendgid could maintain the control. At too great a distance, control would no longer be possible. Ha ha ha! Ironwood Zahn let out a sigh of relief. Without the threat from the Water Flame Lotus, and having pulled away from Ning, he finally relaxed. But then, he was filled with hate. Hatred for this Ji Ning. After all, he had lost his Yin Yang Twin Energy Formation. Boy of the Ji Clan? feel happy for now. I will definitely report this to the Ancestor, and also to Snow Dragon Mountain. The G Clan is the mortal foe of both my Ironwood Clan as well Snow Dragon Mountain. A monster like you is someone which both Snow Dragon Mountain and my Ironwood Clan will eradicate as soon as possible. Ironwood Zahn's heart was filled with hatred, 